The BDN Main Game of the Week is presented by Quirk Auto Group. It's your car. Find it at Quirk. The BDN Main Game of the Week is also brought to you by Tradewinds Market, Greenway Equipment Sales, Dean's Detailing, and by Bangor Savings Bank, Northeast Driving School, and Digital Workshop. The BDN Main Game of the Week is a production of Sportsnet Maine. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Kai's Fields here in Fairfield, Maine. Welcome to the BDN Maine Game of the Week. Great to have you with us. Spectacular night for football. Looking forward to this one. Two four and three teams, a rivalry game. The Mesolonsky Eagles against the Lawrence Bulldogs. Jim Churchill along with Aaron Jackson. Aaron, four and three, a rivalry game, so it means a lot right there. Two teams playing in their final regular season game. But the winner won't play next week. Yeah, and there's no love lost between these two teams. I can guarantee that. They're close, this proximity here, and they love to hit each other. And we're going to see a lot of running in this game, too. I mean, Austin Pelletier is one of the best running backs in the state. And speaking of uh, scoring points, the Lawrence Bulldogs, a loss last week while scoring 56. Yeah, that is a tough one to swallow. We expect that this game is going to have a lot of points scored as well, so we're in for a fun night. All right, fun night and a spectacular night, as I mentioned, for football. Great conditions. Should be a lot of fun, and it's coming up next. It's your picnic table <laughs> and your park bench. It's your hotel room, your office, and your nursery. It's your first date and a shoulder to cry on. It's your barbershop, your dance floor, and your toolbox. It's your car. Find it at Quirk. What do you get when you combine pure diesel power with 1,600 pounds of raw iron and steel? Meet the 2R Series from John Deere. Up to 32 horsepower, four-wheel drive, cruise control, and a six-year powertrain warranty that's best in its class. This rugged workhorse won't make your breakfast, but with quick attach features, you can do pretty much anything else. Ride one today at your John Deere dealer. Visit Greenway Equipment in Bangor and Ellsworth or find us online at greenwayequipment.com. Since 2006, we've offered free ATMs worldwide to our customers, saving them over $16 million. Bangor Savings Bank. You matter more. Welcome back to the BDN Main Game of the Week. I'm Jim Churchill, joined on the broadcast tonight by Aaron Jackson from Sportsnet Maine. Aaron, looking forward to this ball game here tonight. But let's start with the visitors, the Mesolonsky Eagles. They are 4-3, and three, as is Lawrence. Uh, Mesolonsky, as we look at their uh, schedule here, they have the ability, Aaron, to uh, score some points. They're coming off a loss, a tough one, against Coney. Yeah, it was a very tough loss for them, 27-17. This is a team that you're right, it does know, they know how to put points on the board, and more importantly, they know how to run the football. You look at the leading rushers in their class, and you see a lot of Mesolonsky Eagles high up on that list. Lawrence is going to have to find a way to limit the rushing attack they have. Yeah, Austin uh, Pelletier, as you mentioned earlier here in the pregame show, uh, just having an outstanding season, over 1,200 rushing yards. Meanwhile, the Lawrence Bulldogs, uh, they are also 4-3. and three. As we mentioned earlier, also uh, uh, Aaron, that uh, the winner of this game is going to get a bye next week. So a uh, very important game. Lawrence, they're coming off a very tough loss. We mentioned it earlier, 58-56 to 56 to Skowhegan. The Bulldogs can put up some points as well, averaging 34.1. Yeah, and I'm guessing the coaching staff not too happy after a loss like that. They're going to want to leave it all on the field after that one. 58 to 56. I can't remember the last team has scored a team scored 56 points in a game in Maine high school football. Jim and lost it. That is uh, that is heartbreaking for them. All right. The Lawrence Bulldogs will be kicking off to the Mesolonsky Eagles. Legendary Kai's Field, always a great atmosphere here. Aaron, you covered a lot of games uh, for uh, ABC7 in Bangor, and a uh, great crowd here tonight on Senior Night. Yeah, and there always is a great crowd for Senior Night, but in particular when it's Mesolonsky that they're playing. As I mentioned in the open, I mean, these two teams, they know each other. The players all probably live fairly close to each other, so they see each other around town. There's bragging rights on the line. It's not just a playoff spot. It's we beat Lawrence or we beat Mesolonsky. That's a good thing to have if you're from this area. The junior Christian Adams will kick off for the Bulldogs, and we are underway. Pretty good kick. Fielded around the 12-yard line by Mesolonsky. Straight up the field. And oh. an excellent return there for the Eagles up over the... 40-yard line is Austin Pelletier. 
Yeah, a 5'10 you, senior. You heard his name when we talked about him running the football from behind the line of scrimmage, but turns out he knows a thing or two about trying to bring the ball up the field too on special teams. A fantastic run right up the middle there, getting around all the way to about the 40-yard line. Yeah, about a 29-yard return for Pelletier. And the Eagles going to go to the air for oh. some pressure. That ball is loose. That's going to be a fumble. And who's got it? It's going to be Mesolonski. Great job there by number 57 to pounce on that one for the Eagles. That's Brandon Veyu, the sophomore. That ball was loose. Yeah, defensive tackle goes right up the middle there. And uh, he, it looked like he was about to pass, and he just kind of almost snatched it out of the air. He knocked it down enough to get on it. And what a play to start the game. Tough start for Mesolonski. He lose 12 yards, almost 13 yards on that play. So we'll make it uh, second down and 23. Eagles go back to the ground and trying to kick it to the outside is number 34, Alden Balboni. He's a senior, not much running room there, picks up a few. And that'll take the ball up to the 30 of Mesolonski. Yeah, and when you, when you rely on the running backs as much as they do, it kind of leaves you in a tough spot here. You may not practice a ton for what you have here, which is a third down and 10. You've got to get some decent yardage. Again, uh, these communities that make up these two schools in close proximity, a rivalry game, senior night here at Lawrence High School, and a chance to get a bye next week for the winner. And a little discombobulation there in the backfield. Pretty good job there to uh, pick up some yardage by Tyler Lewis, senior halfback. He advances it up to the 35, so a five yard pickup there. And it's gonna be fourth down and 16, so the Eagles will have to punt it away. Not how you wanna start it if you're Mesolonski. Obviously that first play kind of set the tone. Lawrence coming in, getting that fumble force, causing Mesolonski to have a ton of yardage to pick up and just too much to handle for them. And punting for the Eagles. That ball is going to trickle down near the 30-yard uh, line of Lawrence, and it's going to be down there by Lewis. And it's punting there for Mesolonski, number 30, Kyle Berger-Roy. So now we'll get the first chance here to see the Lawrence Bulldogs on offense. Braden Ballard, their quarterback, 6'3". 215 so he's a big boy and you're going to expect that you're going to see him running the ball doing some passing but just overall he's just kind of an imposing force back there no carries uh, for Pelletier in that uh, first series for Mesolonski so here's Lawrence's first possession look at those Lawrence helmets there they got some pressure here on the quarterback and that's going to be a sack and that'll be a loss of about eight yards. As we look at it again, unimpeded there as the blitz is on and streaking through that hole on the right side of the Lawrence offensive line is Tyler Lewis. And he comes up with a sack. And both teams there with a big loss on their first down play. Yeah, and that looks like it was a call blitz, a safety coming up in, a senior Tyler Lewis comes in and I mean, he, he had no one in front of him. It was just, how hard can I hit you? Second down and about 20 yards to go for Lawrence. Here's the end around. Getting the handoff is Isaiah Schooler. And he'll pick up a few yards there on the second down play. Yeah, and just like we saw with Mesolonski, when you have a sack like that, Jim, what happens is this potent rushing attack all of a sudden is forced to try to rip off these big chunks as opposed to five or six yards at a time. Uh, so that obviously creates a lot of problems for both sides. So you want to try to maintain that, you know, at least 10 yards, not be third and 20 like they are here. Third down and about 17 for the Bulldogs. They're going to go to the air. They swing it to the left side, looking for some yards after the catch. They get about five, but that's going to leave them well short of the first down and the Bulldogs will have to boot it away. Yeah, this is probably not what we expected to see from these two teams. I mean, uh, just you don't expect teams like this to come out here and be a little flat. Now maybe that's just that the defenses kind of came out ready to play and the offenses weren't quite ready. So now we'll get that second opportunity already for Mesolonski. 
And what do we got here? We got a whistle. And looks like we've got a, a timeout here. Maybe Lawrence was forced to call the timeout. They may have had too many men on the field there. Yeah, I was trying to count as they came off here to see how many they had. I'm not sure why you'd want to burn a timeout in this type of situation where you know you're going to be punting it. It's pretty obvious, but I guess that's kind of the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, and you'd rather not take the penalty if you can avoid it here. Bulldogs coached by John Hersom, veteran coach. He is assisted by Kevin Malady, Ken Lindloff, and Pete Curtis. Bulldogs started their season with a loss to Brewer, 21 to 19, then a couple of straight wins, one over another rival of theirs, the Winslow Black Raiders. Big win over Hamden, and a loss to Marshwood. They got it handed to them by Marshwood, 42 to nothing, but then two straight wins against Mount Blue and Brunswick, and then scoring 56 points last Friday night, but losing to the Indians of Skowhegan. So things final, finally settled down here for the Bulldogs and a pretty good kick and a pretty good roll lands at about the 38 and it will be touched down at the 32 of Mesolonsky and that's where the Eagles will get things underway. So second attempt here for Mesolonsky and to me Jim it just starts really simple. Don't let them try to get a fumble on this play. Get some positive yardage, gain a little momentum. The saying goes it's a lot easier to run when you're running downhill unless there's no hill here but you get that momentum and all of a sudden the legs feel a little bit stronger. You feel like you can go a little bit faster and then you're off. Good kick there by Zach Nickerson for the Bulldogs. And here's the inside handoff and a solid first down pickup there for Mesolonski. As getting the call there is Austin Pelletier coming in with over 1,200 yards on the season. Yeah, and I mean, again, you can't stop a guy like that. You can only hope to contain him. So I'm sure Lawrence has game planned all week long for watching him and making sure number nine doesn't burn him, but you got to expect he's going to get his at some point or another. Pelletier, 1,223 yards coming in. Picks up six there on the first down play. Now they go back to Lewis. Lewis close to the first down. I think he's got it as he is tackled at the 43 of the Eagles. First, first down of the game. Like I said, build that momentum. Get your legs going. All of a sudden, those blocks are a little bit easier to maintain. Your running back has a little bit more run, and you feel good about yourself. Yeah, nothing fancy on these uh, first two plays in this possession from Masolonski straight up the middle. Surveying the situation is... Declan Thurston, and this time the Bulldogs are in the backfield, and they'll take down Pelletier. That'll be a loss of about one. Yeah, the Bulldogs so far have maintained that line pretty well. They've only given up the one first down. They're, they're, they're holding it. They're not necessarily getting a lot of pushback, but they're at least holding their line where they are, and it's tough for Pelletier to find himself some room. Saw a good penetration on our Greenway replay there from that Lawrence defensive line. Second down and 11. And Thurston back to pass, and he misfires. Pass intended for number 34, Alden Balboni. Balboni was in motion. Thurston trying to lead him there, led him a little too far. Third down and 11, so another long third down situation here for Mesolonski. Balboni in motion again, inside handoff. This is Pelletier spinning, still churning, still going, and he's going to be brought down in Lawrence territory. He's going to be a little bit short of the first down, but... He picks up about 10 on that play, and it's going to be fourth down and one. Yeah, he almost had it. He was churning. You were right. He was moving the pile, pushing guys along. He just couldn't quite get enough behind it to finally get through, and Lawrence doing a good job of bending but not breaking. Fourth down and a yard. Big play early in this one. 5.30 left to go in the first quarter. And they give it to Pelletier. He's got the first down and more inside the 45 of the Bulldogs. 
And he almost treated that uh, first down marker as an end zone marker, didn't he? He kind of just dove up and in through the crowd there to get that first down. He, he knew he needed a yard. He probably got two or three, but he made sure he at least got that one. You notice about Pelletier. He gets it going quickly. It does not take much time to get up to full speed, hit the hole hard there, got the first down. Now the give to Balboni is going to give it to Lewis. Lewis dances around one defender, tries to split a couple, can't get past the last Bulldog, but he's got another first down. Little dipsy do there by the Bulldogs. First the handoff to Balboni. He quickly gave it to Lewis, and another solid pickup. Mesolonski now deep into Lawrence territory. Yeah, and I think I think Lawrence was a little fooled on that one. You you see the handoff going one way, and then all of a sudden there's another guy that actually has the ball going the other way. Nice play by Lewis. So you're right, a little dipsy do, a couple of jukes here and there, and he gets the first. Balboni in motion again, and he's going to get the football. Balboni pounding his way down to about the 20-yard line. So Mesolonski with some momentum here in this first quarter. As you look at this one again, Balboni in motion, going to that right side, got the handoff and some blockers in front. And he took advantage along that right sideline, dropped the shoulder, almost got to the first down marker, came up about a half yard shy. Yeah, I mean, we keep talking about Austin Pelletier, and he is the main focus of this Eagles offense, but if we're being honest, he is certainly not the only guy out there for them. Oh, a little uh, breakdown there on that play by Mesolonski, but the quarterback Thurston turns it into something positive. He's all the way down to the 10-yard line, and they'll move the chains once again. Yeah, and that's just, that's just heads-up football. I mean, there's nothing else you can say other than that. He just... The things weren't going the way he thought they were going to go, and instead of panicking and trying to do something, he just said, I'm going to take it myself. I'm not going to try to hand this ball off, and he ends up getting a nice chunk of yardage. So Lawrence is going to call timeout again. They want to talk things over. Bulldogs uh, playing on their heels just a little bit here in this possession by Mesolonski. It's going to be first down. Are they just outside the 10 yard line, Aaron? So can they get another first down or is it uh, technically first down and goal here? To, to me from this angle, it looks like they may have a, a little bit of space there, but they've taken the first down markers and they've laid them on the yeah, ground. So that tells me they're, they're not going to give them that. But to me, you're right. I think there, there is some room there where they could have maybe said that there's you know an inch or so before you get into the end zone. Eagles don't throw the ball a lot. Thurston, uh, 15 for 30 on the season, coming in for 354 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Again, it's the running game for the Eagles. Pelletier, as I mentioned, over 1,200 yards on the season. Lewis, he's now over 500 yards on the season. Balboni in the mid-300s, so that is where the Eagles make their hay, running that football. Yeah, you don't need to pass much when you have that many guys that know how to run the football. Less risk, I would say. Thurston under center. He's got Pelletier and Balboni behind him. The pitch to Balboni, trying to find some room on that right side. He does, but the hole closes quickly as the uh, Bulldogs take him down after about a uh, four-and-a-half-yard gain there. Yeah, and it would have been a loss in the backfield, too, if not for Pelletier. He can run the football. He also threw a mean block right there, leading the way, enabling Balboni to get those four yards because otherwise there was a linebacker ready to take him down. All right, it's second down and goal from about the five-yard line. Masolonski trying to get on the board first as we approach the three-minute mark here in this first quarter. They hand it off inside, and that's going to be a touchdown. Hitting pay dirt is Austin Pelletier, and it's Masolonski six. The Bulldogs nothing. And that's what we expected to see from Masolonski all game long, just steady, 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 nothing amazing, but they're going to get through, and eventually they're going to score, and you see Pelletier right there. He almost hurdled the guy to do it, and he gets in for the touchdown. So a very good drive by the Eagles on their second possession. On for the extra point is Kyle Berger-Roy. The ball is down, the kick is up, it is strong, and it is true. 
and that makes it a 7-0 Messalonski lead here in this first quarter. Now the question for Lawrence is can you respond because when you're a rushing football team, you can't get behind by three, four, five touchdowns. You've got to make sure you maintain at least a close game. Lawrence really early on here probably going to be looking to respond and respond with force. 68-yard drive there for the Eagles. They take a 7-0 lead, 2.54 left to go here in the first quarter. Next week for the BDN main game of the week, we don't know exactly where we will be. We'll look for an outstanding quarterfinal matchup. We'll wait and see uh, how things uh, play out on this Friday night. It's, uh, some good games uh, to be had out there. We'll just wait and see... Uh, what we think after all the results are in. Yeah, I mean, when we're getting this close, you know, you, this is really getting into football weather, and you, these two teams especially, I mean, it, it's playoffs on the line. You know, it's, it's are you going to keep playing, or are you going to be playing tiddlywinks for the rest of the uh, offseason? Here's the kick, and it is a squibber. It's going to bounce off one of the Bulldogs, quickly picked up, and Lawrence will have good field position. Nice recovery there by number 33, Paul Southwick. Yeah, the sophomore making a nice play. You don't expect to get the football when you're at that spot in the field, but the squib kick somehow makes its way to him. He smartly lets it hit him, picks it up, runs for a couple yards, and then just, you know, lets them take him down. I was always told you, got, you just fall on the football if you got the football and you're not supposed to have it. Don't run. Don't try that, but good for him for getting a couple yards there. Raiden Ballard, the quarterback, fakes the handoff, fires over the middle, but the pass too high, intended there for Garrett Richards. Incomplete, it'll be second down and 10 for Lawrence. Big calling Kinney in there for Mesolonski. 6'3", 240, a senior. I'm pretty sure, I know, obviously, he's a pretty big guy, is Bra or Ballard, but uh, when you see a guy like that coming at you, you want to get rid of the football, so he did. Ken Lindloff, the offensive coordinator for the Bulldogs. Getting the call into Ballard. He'll work from the shotgun here. And we got some pressure coming. The blitz is on for Mesolonski, but Lawrence will pick up about uh, three or four yards there on that play. Taking the handoff, Isaiah Schooler. And that's a good play to have when it's second down in four or five, but you want to try to get a couple more yards than that when you're going on second down and 10, which is what they had there. So now. They find themselves in a similar situation, not quite as long as last time, obviously, but still a, a third down and just far enough where a running play may not get the job done. Well, many football games are decided by how you fare on third down. A big third down and six here for Lawrence. Again, Mesolonski thinking blitz. The pressure is on, but the pass is complete. All kinds of running room on that left side. Finally tripped up inside Mesolonski territory, number 32. That's Tyler LaRouche, well executed there by the Bulldogs. You may not see him pass often, but when they need to, they got the job done there. Really nice play. They lured the defense into thinking it was a run play. They had a wide open guy in the flat, and he hit him in stride. And Nice first down there for the Bulldogs. Again, Mesolonski uh, bringing the pressure there. Good job by that offensive line in the backfield there to uh, stave off that pressure just enough to allow Ballard to get that pass out to LaRouche. Now the handoff straight up the gut, and this will be LaRouche on the ground this time, and he'll pick up about four or five yards, make it four on that first down play. So second down and six. That's what the Bulldogs want. You get three or four in first down, all of a sudden second and third down become much more manageable. You don't have to use those, those pass plays. You can just keep on giving the football to your running backs and letting them eat. 7-0, Mesolonski. Lawrence with some momentum here. Second down and six. Spencer Trask, the wide out to the near side. The handoff up the middle once again go the Bulldogs. They will be uh, short of the first down. It's going to be Schooler with the carry this time. He'll pick up almost six yards, give him five, as you see good work here, Aaron, by that offensive line. Yeah, they're just pushing. They're fighting now, and like I said, you get that momentum. You feel things start to free up. Those holes that weren't open in that first drive, right now they're looking a little bit bigger. 
So all of a sudden, you've got third down and what, one, half a yard maybe, instead of all of a sudden having third and long. Bulldogs to the line. Ballard looks over the situation, hands it off. Inside handoff, it's going to be LaRouche, and he'll fall forward inside the 35, and that'll be another first down here for Lawrence. Interesting to see if they'll run another play here. 16 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Do you, you try to get one more play in, or do you just kind of take formation and, and let things play out and get to the second quarter? The BDN Main Game of the Week brought to you by Quirk Auto Group. It's your car. Find it at Quirk. Two seconds left. Looks like uh, the Bulldogs will be happy to let this first quarter expire. And we will head to quarter number two with a 7-0 lead for the Mesolonsky Eagles. This is the BDN Main Game of the Week. It's your Monday morning and your Friday night. It's your suitcase, your tour guide, and your photo booth. It's your new beginning, and your fresh start. It's your library, your hotspot, and your movie theater. It's your car. Find it at Quirk. What do you get when you combine pure diesel power with 1,600 pounds of raw iron and steel? Meet the 2R Series from John Deere. Up to 32 horsepower, four-wheel drive, cruise control, and a six-year powertrain warranty that's best in its class. This rugged workhorse won't make your breakfast, but with quick attach features, you can do pretty much anything else. Ride one today at your John Deere dealer. Visit Greenway Equipment in Bangor and Ellsworth, or find us online at greenwayequipment.com. Back here at Kai's Field, Jim Churchill along with Aaron Jackson, the entire BDN Main Game of the Week crew here at, uh, or I should say in Fairfield, Maine. Great conditions for football, outstanding crowd, senior night for Lawrence. Ballard back to pass for the Bulldogs. He's got a man downfield and open there and into the end zone. Touchdown, Lawrence on the receiving end, Jared Dodge. So out of the quarter break, Another well-executed play there by Lawrence, and they are within an extra point of tying this one up. Yeah, and you have to wonder if that's what they were planning when they decided with that 16 seconds at the end of the first quarter not to go for it. Maybe they knew they had a play up their sleeves to begin the second that they knew Mesolonski wasn't prepared for. and I mean, he was wide open up the middle there, just easy goings for the end zone. Ballard to Dodge, 42-yard strike there, and uh, now we got a penalty against the Bulldogs, so that's going to make this extra point just a tad tougher. It is Zach Nickerson doing the honors for the team in blue here tonight. Ball is down, and the kick is low and right into the line. And the extra point to no good, so Mesolonski will hold on to the one-point advantage. Yeah, that's a tough situation to be in if you're a main high school football kicker. You're used to kicking real easy extra points, and that's about it. Trying to get a little bit more depth on the Tried to go a little bit lower, and he was too low right into the line. So late in the first quarter, Mesolonski, a 68-yard drive. Austin Pelletier, the touchdown for the Eagles to make it 6-0, the extra point good. 7-0 Mesolonski to the quarter break. First play in the second quarter, the 42-yard touchdown pass from Ballard to Dodge. But the extra point no good, so we stand at 7-6. For Braden Ballard, that is touchdown number four on the season. And for Jared Dodge, I believe that is his first touchdown reception. Now the kick by the Bulldogs. Pretty good one. And it's going to drive Pelletier back to the 10-yard line, but he's got some room. A gaping hole up the middle. Tripped up around the 40-yard line. He'll fall forward to about the 42. And once again, good field position here for Mesolonski Aaron. Yeah, good job right there by Pelletier again, almost at midfield. 
And that's invaluable. When you can have a guy that consistently can get you near midfield just on a kickoff alone, it's that much less you have to try to run in terms of plays. It's that much simpler to get into the end zone. Good blocking in front of Pelletier on that return. Now Lewis in motion. He'll get the handoff. Hits that left side with some pretty good blocking. He'll pick up about five yards on that first down play. Second and five for Mesolonski. They're running a lot to the outside. It seems like maybe going up the middle wasn't working as well as they hoped it would, so now they're trying to find other ways to get those four, five, six-yard gains. Right now it's coming via kind of getting guys to the outside edge. Look at the Class B North standings coming into tonight's action. Scow Hegan on top with a record of four and three. Coney second at five and two, then Mesolonski at four and three. Lawrence at four and three. A point-worthy game for whoever the winner might be. And the winner will definitely get a bye, and they may end up in that number one spot. Pelletier, the carry on second down. He's brought down about two yards shy of the first down marker. First and the quarterback has to get a... Uh, Second check in with the uh, Eagle sideline there on what play the Eagle coaching staff wants here on this important third down play. 10-25, left to go, first half. Thurston, wheels, hands it off, and it's gonna be Pelletier, and he's got the first down. That's all you need. Doesn't have to be pretty, doesn't have to be 10, 15 yard gains, just do five, four, two. The math adds up. That's 11. I can do simple math. And Mesolonski looking to pass on the uh, first play of the ball game. That did not go well. Since then, they have gone back to their bread and butter, running the football, and it has been successful. First and 10 from the Lawrence 47. And again, it's going to be Pelletier, and it's going to take three or four Bulldogs to bring him down, but they do so at the 44-yard line of the Bulldogs. Keep those legs churning, and he likes to get hit, doesn't he? I mean, you see him when he is about to get hit, it almost like he relishes it. He kind of lowers the shoulder and almost jumps into them like, yeah, bring your best, bring it, I got you. Crowd, as usual, ringing the field here at Kai's. They don't Sec like to sit here, Jim. Second down and seven. Here is Lewis getting the pitch. Lewis has some running room. Lewis looking for the end zone. Lewis will find it. He is in, another touchdown for the Eagles. That is a 44-yard touchdown run by Tyler Lewis, and it's now 13-6, Mesolonski. Yeah, and you see him, he gets the pitch here, and he just goes right between some defenders, hurdles a guy, and nice blocking out ahead of him on this play, and I mean, it's, it's easy money. That's pretty easy money there. He gets one guy at the end, it looks like he wants to try to tackle him, but he's just a little bit too fast, and... Eagles in for their second touchdown. Right now, the Bulldogs searching for answers for this Mesolonski running game. They are running roughshod over the Bulldog defense right now. Here's Berger Roy on for the extra point. Pelletier the holder, the kick is up. The kick is good. That's a very strong leg right there by Berger Roy. And that'll extend the Mesolonski lead Two, eight. They lead it 14 to six. I think that football actually went over the uh, back fence there out into the uh, road. West Street, yeah. Yeah, so they're going to have to get that football back. Anyone watching the game, if you're across the street <laughs> over there, you want to stay nice and warm, maybe go outside and receive a football for them because they're going to need that. So, two consecutive outstanding drives here by Mesolonski. Got the eight point lead, so still just a one score differential. That penalty looms large, though, doesn't it? First, you know, extra point attempt they have, they get that penalty, could push them back a little bit further, can't make that extra point. Now, all of a sudden, you're forced to go for two. Those little things can add up and may play a major role in this game. Bulldogs break the huddle. Kyle Berger-Roy, the 5'10 sophomore. He's got a strong leg. Back deep is Schooler for the Bulldogs. 
Isaiah Schooler, a 5'10 junior. Low line drive, fielded by Schooler, shoulder high, straight up the middle. Now cuts it to his left, and he's going to be hit there. Arm tackle by number 33 for Mesowanski. Good job there by Josh Goff. Yeah, he, he had some room to run there if it wasn't for that tackle. Nice play by Goff to bring him down. But decent field position here for the Bulldogs. They'll start at their own 36. Schooler and LaRouche in the backfield behind the uh, quarterback Ballard. And the handoff to Schooler and he'll pick up a yard or two. Not much on that first down play. Still positive yardage though. That's what you're looking for if you're both these teams. Just give me positive yardage on every play and more often than not it's going to end getting closer to that end zone. Second down and nine for Lawrence. Ballot under center. Rolls to his right. Looking down. Phil, he's got a man. It's LaRouche. He's got the first down and he'll be tackled just shy of midfield. Good job there by Pelletier to keep the yards after the catch to a minimum, and LaRouche comes up limping. He'll head to the sideline, but a nice pick up there, and the chains will advance across the way. Yeah, I'd say that right knee or right ankle is bothering me. He, he made it almost all the way to the sidelines before having to start hopping on one foot. Here's hoping he's okay, but how about the Lawrence Bulldogs now? All of a sudden, they're finding themselves with some nice pass attempts here. You gotta wonder if that's something they're gonna continue all game long. Yeah, we've seen a lot of pressure, uh, some blitzes being employed here in this first half by Mesolonski. And this time they will beat the blitz. And it's going to be Isaiah Schooler picking up another first down. He is tackled at the 39 of Mesolonski. Yeah, not expected to see a guy like Schooler. You don't see him carry the ball a ton for Lawrence. So all of a sudden he goes right through. Easy pickings because the defense was already almost behind him on that play. Yeah, good job there. By those Lawrence blockers, opening up a hole there for Schooler. And he darted through it for a big game. So it's first and 10 from the 39, and uh -oh. a collision in the backfield. Uh -oh. Loose football, and that's going to be a turnover. It's going to be Mesolonsky football as Ballard and who was it? Was it Schooler? Yeah, it looked like the two of them kind of collided. I don't know if there was a miscommunication there, but. Both guys seemed like they wanted to take the football. Neither one ended up with it. You know who ended up with it? Tyler Lewis, who keeps making big plays for the Eagles. On both sides of the football. First turnover of the evening. We'll see if the Mesolonski Eagles can make it hurt for Lawrence. Thurston, the quarterback. Lewis in motion. Gets the pitch. Trying to get around that left end. He does before he's finally tackled by a couple of Bulldogs across the way. But a solid pickup on first down. Yeah, he may be having the game of his life so far. Tyler Lewis showing everything that he can do in this game. Of course, capped off the last drive for Mesolonski with a 44-yard touchdown run. For the best in John Deere sales and service, it's Greenway Equipment. They have locations in Bangor and Ellsworth. Visit them at greenwayequipment.com. Like them on Facebook. Greenway equipment, nothing runs like a deer. Eagles back to work, and they will rush it up the middle. Not much give in that defense there as Pelletier picks up a couple. All marked at about the 45 and a half yard line of the Bulldogs, and it's going to be third down and three. Yeah, and this is manageable. This is what you want. You're okay with third down and three when you're able to get three, four yards every single time out there, so. They're good with this, I would imagine. 6.20 left to go here in the first half. 14-6 Mesolonski. They're looking for more. Here's Pelletier again. He's got the first down and more. He's going to be taken down at the 40-yard line of the Bulldogs. Another first down for Mesolonski. So after they sputtered in their first possession, a three and out, they have been marching down the field here tonight. Yeah, they really have been, and it's been kind of a bevy of different guys for these Eagles that have gotten the job done. Obviously, Pelletier, Lewis, both the guys just getting the football and knowing what to do with it, running. Thurston, 
And again, that double handoff is going to be Lewis, and he's going to have another touchdown. Tyler Lewis into the end zone. Last time it was a 44-yard touchdown run. This time he darts into the end zone with a 40-yard touchdown run. Yeah, and you see some misdirection here. You got the delayed handoff. Lawrence confused. Lewis, he's not confused. He sees the pay dirt, and he's ahead of the defense just like that snap of a finger into the end zone for the touchdown. And that hurts if you're the Bulldogs because now a turnover turned into six, possibly seven points. Second touchdown of the night for Lewis. Now in hockey, Aaron, that would be an assist for Thurston and Balboni there. Yeah, I mean, maybe we should do something like that for football. we got to get some sort of assist for these guys because they're just as important as the running back sometimes. Berger Roy this time drills it through the uprights once again. So it's now 21-6 to Mesolonski. Yeah, and this is dangerous territory here for the Bulldogs, Jim, because as we said, they don't like to pass the football. They can. They've shown they can this game, but they don't like to. And so their issue now is you've got to maintain at least a close proximity in terms of score because you take away the run when all of a sudden you're down by three or four touchdowns. So they've got to get something here before the half. Got some uh, scores here to report. Uh, Lewiston, a 6-2 to two lead over Edward Little in another rivalry game. Oceanside leading Belfast, 27 to nothing. Brewer over Brunswick at Doyle Field and Brewer, 7 to nothing the score there. Bucksport, 20 to nothing over Stearns. These are first quarter scores. Foxcroft, 14 to nothing over Madanocook. Oxford Hills Chevers, no score. Dexter leading Holton, 6 to nothing. And it's MDI, 22, Nokomis nothing. That's a game between two 6 and 1 teams. That MDI team. They are looking good at this point. And MCI is 7-6 lead over Winslow. We just saw that Husky team last week beat up on the Foxcroft Academy Pony, so they're obviously very good at what they do. Here come the Bulldogs on the return. They're going to have good field position. Again, a ground ball kick picked up there by number 81 for the Bulldogs. That is Nate Regalado. He's just a sophomore. Nice return there for Regalado. Takes it up to the 44-yard uh, line. See our score there, 21-6. to Mesolonski, a couple of other scores. Miami of Ohio leading Maine 2-0. That's hockey action at the Alphon Arena. And uh, Celtics taking on Philadelphia. Tight one in that one in the uh, first quarter. 16-15, to the Celtics a lead. Here's Schooler. He's got a first down. He's into Mesolonski territory. Tackle made at the 44, and the Bulldogs trying to get some momentum back on their side. Yeah, they need it. They've got to get some first downs here. More importantly, they've got to get a score. This is this is an important drive for them. You can't. I know it's only the second quarter, and there's plenty of football left, but you've got to maintain that proximity. Like I said, Ballard working from the shotgun. Coming in motion, Spencer Trask. They're going to fling it to the left side for Dodge, and that ball is loose. Was it an incomplete pass? Well, I'm wondering if was he was... lateral? Yeah, if they were saying he was past the line of scrimmage or not. They just incomplete. called it... Yeah. yeah. It took some hesitation there, though, didn't it? It wasn't just an immediate whistle blow. Normally, you see that the ball's dead immediately. This time, you didn't hear that. I think the refs were a little concerned maybe that it was not a forward pass, but it looked like it was. BDN Main Game of the Week brought to you by Tradewinds Markets. They've got some great happy hour specials and some great Sunday football specials. Family size pizza for just $6.99, a one pound serving of wings for just $6.99, a pound of crispy fries for only $2.99. Bundle all three and save even more. Get all three for just $12.99. That's your local Tradewinds Market and Anchor Deli. I think they deliver to press boxes. We could use some. Here's Schooler, and he's got some running room. He's deep into Mesolonski territory, run out of bounds at the 31 of the Eagles. So some good rhythm right now in this Lawrence offense. As they chew up some yards there. Clock stops with uh, Schooler being taken out of bounds. Plenty of time left, almost five minutes. You've got plenty of time. You don't want to give Mesolonski too much time when they get the ball back, but right now, nothing to worry about. 
Ballard inside handoff. It's going to be number 87 for the Bulldogs. That is Matthew White. Solid pick up there for the fullback. He's just a junior. And that'll be another first down. We got a timeout being called here by Mesolonsky. They have an injured player. Is that Pelletier slow to get to his feet? It, it is. is. Yeah, you never want to see that for any player. And he is so important to the Eagles team. He looks like he might be shook up a little bit. Kind of, you know, not stumbling so much off the field, but he's definitely, oh, yeah, and that's, oh. that's not good. Bishop, uh, uh, pardon me, uh, Brad Bishop, the head coach for the Mesolonsky Eagles out there, and his star player collapsing near the 15-yard uh, line there as it looked like he was going to make his way off the field. It appears to be the right leg, maybe the ankle of Pelletier, who's laying on his back teammates down on the one knee yeah I think it might be his knee too that's what they're working on right now and you could see him as he he tried to get off the field under his own power he made it what three or four steps and all of a sudden you just you could see him kind of hunch over in pain you knew that something was was wrong in there and you've got to hope that maybe he just banged knees with someone and it's you know just temporary and he's able to come back into this game because he is so important to the Eagles Dean's Detailing has been Maine's auto detailing leader since 1971. Renew your vehicle's appearance, protect your auto investment, enjoy the ride. Call 945-3016 or book your appointment online at deansdetailing.com. Mentioned the uh, Class B North standings. Skowhegan, Coney, Mesolonsky, Lawrence, the top four. The winner of this game will get a bye, may get the number one seed. Brewer in action tonight against Brunswick. Brewer the uh, number five team in Class B North right now, taking on Brunswick, the number six team. Tough year for the uh, Dragons there. I'm not sure I ever thought I'd hear the Dragons struggling in a football yeah. season. I mean, that just seemed like that team that it was a juggernaut and you just you knew every year that they were going to be absolutely fantastic, so I'm very surprised to hear that they're having a down year. But it seems like it happens to everyone every once in a while. They'll be back. Not a pretty pitcher if you are a Mesolonsky Eagle fan as uh, their star running back, Austin Pelletier, getting uh, helped off the field, not putting any pressure on that right leg, and the training staff will check him out. So... Somebody else will have to step up for Mesolonsky on both sides of the football. Here is Schooler getting the call again for Lawrence. He'll be taken out of bounds at about the 13-yard uh, line. And you, you saw it uh, earlier this week, the Boston Celtics losing one of their star players, Gordon Hayward, first game of the season to an absolutely gruesome injury. You've got to be able to kind of get out of the shell-shocked state. You know, it took the Celtics a couple of a little bit of time to find their rhythm after that. They didn't know what to do for the the Eagles. You've built yourself a little bit of a pad here, but you've you've got to kind of pick yourselves up and say, you know what, we can win without this guy because we may have to. Uh, the good news for them is they've got a lot of playmakers on both sides of the ball. I mean, Tyler Lewis has already shown today how good he is, so they should be okay. Second down, about four for Lawrence. Schooler, once again, he's been a busy man. He's inside the 10. What a run there by number two in blue as he danced around a couple of defenders. Yeah, he's shifty. I think that's the word that I would use, kind of like Deion Lewis for the Patriots. He's one of those guys where you think you've got him. All of a sudden, he's three yards downfield. Yeah, so watch you, this, Aaron. Right, you've got to really watch him. So you see he gets by a couple of defenders there, and all of a sudden, oh, look at Whoa. that. Just... All of a sudden just plants and says, nah, I'm going to go around you. Goes around another guy. Finally gets taken down, I think, by his own player more than anything else. Shifty. That's the way I describe you when you're making your NFL picks, Jackson. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do to win. Schooler. And he can't quite get to the pylon. He'll come up about two and a half yards shy of the end zone. That's all right, though. You got more chances. You know, it's right there now. That end zone is close. You can feel it. You can smell it when you're that close. Now, you got to wonder here, is Lawrence just going to keep playing as they have been, or are they going to maybe try to take a little bit more time off the clock? you got four minutes here left 
in the second quarter. That's a lot of time to give the ball back to the Eagles for. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink, oh, pardon me, overthink it at this point. Things are rolling for you. And it's been rolling for Schooler. He's going to try to back his way into the end zone, but tackled at about the uh, one-yard line. So the Bulldogs knocking on the door. It is going to be third and goal from about the one and a half. Big play right here. You've got to get this touchdown. You don't want to have to try to settle for a field goal. You want to just pound that thing in there, get the seven points or eight points if you decide to go for two afterwards. Got the big quarterback to do it. There and it is. And the quarterback sneak. It'll be Ballard taking it himself. No doubt about it. Braden Ballard, the six foot three, 215 pound senior quarterback, picks up the touchdown. Bulldogs back on the board. And let's see if they go for two here. Down by nine. Well, they're going to go for the extra point. And they'll hope it goes better than it did the last time. Zach Nickerson on. Right-footed kicker, swings the leg, and the ball will just get over the crossbar and through the uprights. And it's now 21 to 13. So just a one possession game here. Messalonsi is going to get it back, Aaron, but they will get the ball back without their star running back. Yeah, and this is going to be a challenge for them. Obviously, he's very important on defense, but he is very important on offense. Over 1,200 yards on the season. You don't just replace a guy like that with one player. You're going to need a series of two, three, four guys that step up and step into new roles that maybe they aren't used to. I'm looking probably at Tyler Lewis as being that big guy that's going to take over a lot of the snaps, but there'll be other guys in there too that, that know how to run the football. That's a good thing about this Eagles team, Jim, is you look at the depth they have at that running back position, we mentioned they've got three or four guys near the tops of the rushing uh, ranks. So certainly there's other guys on this team that know how to carry a football. BDN Main Game of the Week brought to you by Digital Workshop, specializing in video production, including weddings, events, sports, videos for business, and the web. Digital Workshop, simply the best. Find them at mainprovideo.com. Kim Mitchell, he knows what he's doing. I'll tell you that. He better. Give me a thumbs up behind me. He, ha he made me say that. He's actually, you know, he was pointing at me. And here's the boot. And this time the Eagles will fall on that football. Big number 77 there for Mesolonski. Colin Kinney, 6'3", 240 pounds. Saw that ball bouncing towards him. Didn't field it cleanly, but played it very coolly and calmly. Fell on the football, and Mesolonski will have... Outstanding field position once again. Yeah, both these teams getting some good field position for a variety of reasons. It helps when you're this close. I mean, man. Here's Lewis, the deep back, gets the pitch, and Tyler Lewis pushes it upfield, close to midfield. He'll take it up to the 48 of the Eagles. Lewis, two big touchdown runs here tonight, one for 44 yards, and the latest for 40 yards. We called... Uh, Isaiah Schooler shifty earlier. I would say that uh, Tyler Lewis, he is slippery. He kind of gets around guys and makes sure that he doesn't get taken down. And this time it's going to be Balboni. Powers his way, I believe, to the first down. Let's see where they spot the football. It will be a first down. So once again, they move the chains. You're going to hear those names a lot, Balboni and Lewis. Those are the guys that are going to be carrying the rock now for the Mesolonsky Eagles for the majority of this game. and They're going to have to step up. They're going to have to do some more things that they haven't done before. Lewis in motion, gets the handoff, has blockers in front. Lewis darts to his left, extends the football down to the 36-yard line. Tyler Lewis having himself a career night here. Another first down for Mesolonsky. Yeah, he's, he's, he's just good. He's slippery. And the, the getting to the outside the way that the Eagles have, I mean, that comes back to just, A, making sure your line protects, and B, making sure you get a couple of guys downfield to block. And that comes back to your tight ends and your receivers and maybe any offensive lineman that you're pulling off the line. But right now, those sweep plays, they're just easy money for the Eagles. 
And this time they'll go up the middle using Balboni. He'll get down to about the 30-yard line. Jim Churchill along with Aaron Jackson. Great to have you with us for this BDN Main Game of the Week. Final week of the regular season. Just beautiful conditions for football. The flag not moving at all. Temperatures in the 50s. Meselonski has had a good first half offensively. Lewis in motion again. The pitch again from Thurston. Lewis knocked out of bounds into the Eagles sideline. It's going to be close to another first down. They found and their rhythm. And just a little bit short there. Go up the middle with Balboni. Sweep over to the right or left. Up the middle, Balboni. Right or left sweep. It's working. It's consistent. Third down and less than a yard. Third down, about a foot. And we got a timeout being called. No, oh, it's going to be an official timeout. Maybe the uh, chain is hung up a little bit there on the far sideline. The official on that side looking over things and now wants to talk it over with the referee. Yeah, you got to wonder what's going on over there. Certainly not close enough to the first down marker to want to try to measure this. Uh, I wonder if it's something going on with the chains or something the sideline ref noticed that, you know, is going on over there. He's pointing all kinds of things over there. I don't know what exactly he's pointing at, though. Northeast Driving School has been Maine's leader in driver education since 1969. The Northeast team is experienced, professional, and dedicated to their students. Greater Bangor's number one is Northeast Driving School. Call 942-1769 or register at northeastdrivingschool.com. It's a good crowd. You know, when we started this game, I looked out there and I thought it was a little light, but they filled in very nicely. And the one thing you can really appreciate when you come to Ke Kai's Field is you look around the edges and there's always people standing and filling those sidelines. They don't want to sit in the bleachers. That's not close enough for them. They want up close and personal. They're going to be standing there as close as they can to the field screaming for their home team. Be sure to catch The Drive weekdays 4 to 6 on Sports Radio 92.9 The Ticket. The Drive, your sports, your teams, your show. And we're going to get a measurement here after... All of the discussion, they'll see where the Eagles stand here on this uh, third down or wow. first down situation. It's going to be a first down. So after all that, it works out for Mesolonsky. I didn't think I didn't think they were even that close. I guess maybe we don't have the right angle here or something, or maybe the sticks moved a little bit, and that was the issue. Is the sticks weren't in the right place, but I didn't think they had that there. Balboni and Lewis behind Thurston. He looks over his offensive line at the Bulldog defense. Lewis gets the ball from Thurston. And again, very good yardage on first down. Whenever you see that uh, member of the chain gang over there holding the uh, first down marker, when you see that marker going down as players approach it, you know it's going to be a close call, but once again, Mesolonski gets enough. Yeah, and for another the, first down. The Eagles right now, you got a minute left in this second quarter. You've got to maybe hustle a little bit more than they have been to try to get a couple plays off here to get into the end zone. Balboni, not much here, maybe a yard or two. So Austin Pelletier, the talented uh, player for Mesolonski, both offensively and defensively, he's left the ball game sitting on the bench across the way with ice on his right knee on the near sideline, Aaron. Another injured player, this time for the Bulldogs, number 32, Tyler LaRouche. He's got ice on his right knee. Yeah, and you don't want to see that. It's, it's unfortunate for both teams that they've got some guys out. Hopefully they're able to get back here in the second half, maybe get some treatment at halftime. We're closing in on the half, uh, but that's uh, it's not what you want to see. You don't want anyone going out to injury. Mesolonsky High School, Founded in 1969, we'll get uh, some school notes coming up here at the half. I hear they recruit their players from a very magical place from time to time. I think we'll, we'll probably find out more about that at halftime. 
I think that's a dig at uh, one of our teammates here. I'm all about camaraderie, Aaron. I would never <laughs> do a thing like that. Oh, you had it up in the sleeve. I just got to it first, and you know it. 57 seconds left now. If you're you know, a running team like both these teams are and you find yourself in this situation, you may want to try a pass here. Try to catch Lawrence off guards because you, you've got you know, a good 15 yards to gain here before you get into the end zone and not a lot of time to do it. Lawrence will have the football first in the second half. Here's a loose football. Did the Bulldogs fall on it? Yes, they did. Big turnover for Mesolonski. So each team with a turnover here in this first half. And I just mentioned, Aaron, that Lawrence will get the ball first in the second half. They've got 50 seconds to work with here ending this half. They may play it conservatively knowing they've got that football out of the halftime. Yeah, simple miss, miss handoff here. I mean... He gives the ball, puts it into his chest, and just can't hold on to it. Goes down to the ground. Good job by the Lawrence Bulldogs defensive line to pounce on that thing and just accept that they're going to get the ball and go with it. They didn't try to pick it up and run with it. Yeah, with the way the Mesolonski offense has been going, you expected more points there late in the half. But instead, Lawrence with a football. Now Ballard going deep. He's got a man. It's on the money <laughs> to Schooler. And he's brought down inside the 35 of Mesolonski. Did I say Lawrence might play it conservatively? No. I don't think so. That's Just Coach Herso. That's why we're in the booth, Jim. That's what why a, they're on the sideline. What a throw by Braden Ballard. Yeah, I mean, that was. He threw it about 50 yards, and it was right on the money. Now the Bulldogs looking for some points of their own. Ballard back to pass. He's going to be hit just as he was releasing the football. So very quickly, incomplete pass is the signal. Yeah, and I, man, that throw. You, we talked about how much these teams like to run the ball, so you don't really see them pass it a whole lot. But I guess sometimes when you're effective running, you don't need to pass. But certainly Braden right there showing the arm that he has. I mean, that thing was a perfect spiral. That was both, like Tom Brady. Both teams coming off a loss. Both teams trying to get back in the win column and get that first round by in the Class B North postseason. Flags are down, and we got some movement on the Lawrence side of the football. So that's going to set the Bulldogs back five. Ball put down at the 39-yard line. Yeah, five-yard penalty, not the end of the world here. You've got a lot of ground to make up anyway. Now it's just second and 15, which you're probably not trying to run this ball. You're going to keep passing it and hoping that uh, Braden Ballard can show off that arm that he showed off a couple plays ago. Just got to give him the time. That's been the issue. Matthew White to his right. In motion, it's uh, Spencer Trask, and it's going to be bad. We got flags down again. I think another issue with the Lawrence offense there is everybody was not on the same page. Yeah, that ball was snapped, and the line was still standing there. <laughs> and you see number 87, Matthew White, in the backfield with his hands in the air saying, What's going on? Meanwhile, uh, Braden Ballard had the football looking to find someone, and there was all kinds of miscommunication there. So after that long, complete pass from Ballard to Schooler, and Ballard pointing to his helmet there. I don't know if he was taking the blame for that mishap or if he was uh, asking his uh, teammates to make sure that they had their heads in the game here as they will march off five more. So the Bulldogs going in the wrong direction here late in the first half. Down by eight, 23.7 up on the clock here at Kai's Field. So look across the way at Lawrence High School in the background. Ballard from the shotgun, Schooler in motion. Ballard back to pass, now rolling out to his right. He's gonna fire downfield, it's a wobbly pass, but Schooler will reel it in! It's complete inside the 15, 13.5 up on the clock. What a catch there by Schooler. He just went up and got it, didn't he? I mean, that ball was wobbly, didn't come out of the hand right. And Here it is. It, I thought it was going to be an interception there for a second, and you see what ends up happening is somehow, some way, he, he comes back to the ball, and he makes a perfect play on it to not only save it from an interception, but get some big yardage. Yeah, the defensive back was there. I'm not sure who that was, but it was a one-on-one -on -one battle and Schooler went up for it and uh, 
Schoep, some very sticky hands there, brought it in. Ball marked down at the 14 of Meselonski. Yeah, Not a lot of time here for the Bulldogs, Aaron, but a chance to uh, potentially tie this one up with a two-point conversion. Yeah, they've got a couple opportunities here. I will say, if you're the Eagles on that last play, you just want the defensive back to kind of knock that thing away. Don't go for that interception. Just do whatever you can to make it hit the ground. But for the Bulldogs now, how things have changed. They get that second touchdown. Meselonski starts that drive. It looks like they're going to score before the half. Fumble recovery, and all of a sudden, you've found yourself in a situation where you could have a tie game at half. Would not have thought that about six minutes of game time ago. Back to the scoreboard. Oceanside 41, Belfast nothing. Coney a 7-0 lead over Gardner. Brunswick and Brewer nodded up at 14 in Brewer. John Baffs, Oliver Orno, 32 to nothing. Edward Little now leading Lewiston 8 to 6. NBI 22, Nakoma 7. We'll have more scores at the half. Right now, back to the field. And it's going to be Trask in motion. Ballard flips it to Dodge. Dodge downfield, and his pass uh -huh. is behind the intended receiver as Dodge's pass. Behind the intended receiver, as I mentioned, that's Logan Fortin. He had a step on the defender. Yeah, I think he had the touchdown if, if he had just gotten the ball to him. But, you know, when you got a guy that's not a quarterback throwing the ball, he had a good spiral on it, just didn't lead his guy as much as he needed to. And now you're down to probably your final play right here at a chance in the end zone. You might be able to get... Oh, they're well, going to go for a field goal. Wow. On to try to add three points is Sam Craig. The kick is low, and it's going to be off a Meselonski Eagle picked up by a Bulldog, but brought down to the turf there. I think it was number 55. That's Alex Higgins, an offensive tackle. It was Higgins. We've got 2.6 seconds up on the clock. It's going to be Meselonski football. And Ken Lindloff, the offensive coordinator for the Bulldogs, has taken his... Headset off. I think that Save. ball went off the back of Nick Puglio. The uh, kick, just he was turned around looking the other way to look for the kick, I think, and it went right off his back. Breeze has picked up, and it was blowing into the uh, face of the kicker there, Craig. And Breeze uh, blowing from left to right as we look down on Kai's field. So yeah. it looks like. Barring something spectacular here for Meselonski, we'll head to the break with the Eagles on top by eight. Yeah, just take a knee on this one. I don't think they're going to be doing anything with it. Victory formation. And they do, and that'll do it for half number one, an entertaining first 12 minutes as the uh, final seconds wind down here in this first half. And there is the end of half number one. 21 for Mesolonski, 13 for Lawrence. That is our halftime score. We'll take a break, come back with the halftime reports on the BDN Main Game of the Week. Exclusive savings are happening at a Tradewinds location near you. Save big with our happy hour specials every day from 4 to 6 p.m. Grab a family size one topping pizza, $6.99. Get one pound of our tender boneless wings, $6.99. A full pound of our locally famous buffalo wings, $6.99. Or one pound of our crispy french fries, just $2.99. Get this bundle deal and save 50%. Score even more with extended hours on Sunday at a Tradewinds location near you. It's your picnic table and your park bench. It's your hotel room, your office, and your nursery. It's your first date and a shoulder to cry on. It's your barber shop, your dance floor, and your toolbox. It's your car. Find it at Quirk. You deserve a clean car. Let Dean's take care of the details. Dean's Detailing has been Maine's auto detailing leader since 1971. Let the pros at Dean's renew your vehicle's appearance and protect your auto investment. For interior detailing, exterior detailing, and complete detailing packages, call Dean's at 945-3016 or book your appointment online at deansdetailing.com. And Dean's gift cards are the perfect fit for any special occasion. Dean's Detailing. We make used look like new. Since 2006, we've offered free ATMs worldwide to our customers, saving them over $16 million. Bangor Savings Bank. You matter more. 
What do you get when you combine pure diesel power with 1,600 pounds of raw iron and steel? Meet the 2R Series from John Deere. Up to 32 horsepower, four-wheel drive, cruise control, and a six-year powertrain warranty that's best in its class. This rugged workhorse won't make your breakfast, but with quick attach features, you can do pretty much anything else. Ride one today at your John Deere dealer. Visit Greenway Equipment in Bangor and Ellsworth or find us online at greenwayequipment.com. Since 2006, we've offered free ATMs worldwide to our customers, saving them over $16 million. Bangor Savings Bank, you matter more. Back here at Kai's Fields at the end of the first half, this is the halftime report on the BDN main game of the week. Jim Churchill along with Aaron Jackson. Thanks for joining us here tonight. Entertaining first half. Mesolonski uh, sputtered on their first possession of the ball game, as did Lawrence, but then the Eagles uh, got things going. A, a big 68-yard drive, and it's capped here with a touchdown plunge by Austin Pelletier, who would later leave the ball game here in the uh, first half. Eagles at that point, a 7-0 lead. Lawrence would get a 42-yard touchdown pass from Braden Ballard. But uh, then it was Tyler Lewis, his first of two long touchdown runs. This one goes for 44 yards as he is the into the end zone for six more. And at that point, it was a 14 to six Mesolonski lead. And once again, it's Lewis after the handoff first went to Balboni. Balboni dishes it to Lewis and he'll prance this time into the end zone 40 yards out for the uh, Eagles. And uh, 21 for them in the first half. Bulldogs trying to fight back and they would. This is their next to the last possession of the first half as uh, they get the touchdown there. Braden Ballard taking it himself. He's a big quarterback. 6'3", 215, no problem there. That made it 21 to 13, Aaron, and that would be the score after the first uh, 24 minutes here tonight. And uh, Lawrence is gonna get the football first out of the half, and I'm sure they're looking forward to that because they started to move the ball, especially in that second quarter. Yeah, they really started to figure things, some things out. It looked like that first quarter, they were a little tentative, and Mesolonski was blitzing a lot, bringing a lot of guys to the football. And then in that second quarter, all of a sudden, you saw Lawrence start to rip off some of that yardage they're known for, the five, six, seven yard games. And we saw the arm, too, of Braden Ballard. I mean, we came into this game thinking it was going to be run, run, run. All of a sudden, Ballard, I mean, he was just throwing the football all over the field. So I'll be interested to see if they do more of that in the second half, if they try to air it out a little bit more and hit guys like Schooler, Isaiah Schooler, who had a heck of a first half. All right, we're going to take a break here in the halftime reports. When we come back, we will check in on the scoreboard. Also coming up here in the halftime reports, uh, we'll take a look, a closer look at these two schools, Mesolonsky High School and Lawrence High School. This is the BDN Maine Game of the Week. Exclusive savings are happening at a Tradewinds location near you. Save big with our happy hour specials every day from 4 to 6 p.m. Grab a family size one topping pizza, $6.99. Get one pound of our tender boneless wings, $6.99. A full pound of our locally famous buffalo wings, $6.99. Or one pound of our crispy french fries, just $2.99. Get this bundle deal and save 50%. Score even more with extended hours on Sunday at a Tradewinds location near you. It's your Monday morning and your Friday night. It's your suitcase, your tour guide, and your photo booth. It's your new beginning and your fresh start. It's your library, your hotspot, and your movie theater. It's your car. Find it at Quirk. If time is infinite, why is there never enough of it? A John Deere One Family Tractor with Quick Park lets you attach and go. iMatch Quick Hitch gives you more time for what you love. So it takes less work to do more work. Auto Connect Drive Over Mower Deck, done. They're not making any more land, but there's plenty of time if you know where to look. Visit Greenway Equipment in Bangor and Ellsworth or find us online at greenwayequipment.com. 
Choosing the right school for driver's ed has never been more important. Northeast Driving School has been the leader in driver training since 1969. Greater Bangor's number one team of instructors is experienced, professional, and dedicated to its students. Northeast offers a variety of weekday and weekend courses. Call 942-1769 or sign up at northeastdrivingschool.com. Welcome back to Kai's Fields here in Fairfield. Jim Churchill, Aaron Jackson, the entire Sportsnet main crew with you here for tonight's ball game between the Mesolonsky Eagles and the Lawrence Bulldogs. We got ourselves a good one. Mesolonsky with a 21 to 13 lead at the end of the first half. Let's check some halftime scores elsewhere. Oceanside all over Belfast tonight. The score there 54 to nothing. Coney and Gardner have a good one going as well. Rams right now leading seven to nothing. And Brunswick has taken a 20 to 14 lead over Brewer at Doyle Field in Brewer. John Babs leading Orno 32 to nothing. It's Lewiston over Edward Little 14 to eight in that one. MDI down on the island leading in Nokomis 22 to seven. Ellsworth over Washington Academy 21 to nothing. MCI over Winslow. 14 to 6, that game being played in Pittsfield, just up the road. Uh, Waterville and Herman, no score. And it's uh, Skowhegan trailing Mount Blue, 14 to 7. Skowhegan coming off a game where they scored 58 points, uh, scoring just 7 against Mount Blue tonight. Dexter, 6, Holton, nothing. Foxcroft leading Madinaw Cook, 20 to nothing. Bucksport over Stearns, 20 to nothing. And it's Oxford Hills and Chevres tied at 7. Main hockey in action tonight at the Alfond Arena against Miami of Ohio. And right now the Black Bears on the short end of the stick. It is 3-0 Miami early in the uh, second period. And the Celtics and 76ers going at it in Philadelphia. And uh, last score we had Celtics leading the Sixers 39-37 with 4.15 left to go in the first half. 21-13 our halftime score, the Mesolonsky Eagles with the lead in this Class B North tilt. Both teams coming in with records of four and three, looking forward to the second half. But we also have a uh, great performance going on here down on the field uh, by a, a bunch of uh, students here in the uh, at Lawrence High School, I should say. This is quite a dramatic and uh, musical performance here on the field. And we're joined by the principal of Lawrence High School, Mark Campbell. And uh, I made sure I got it Campbell and not Campbell. Uh, Thank you. Principal. Um, so let's talk about some of the uh, things that are going on at Lawrence High School. Um, just some of the, uh, the special things that are happening at your school. So um, I think you know, you're seeing it right here. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow night we're going to have uh, seven or eight other schools here. And, you know, we're very proud of our young musicians out there. So um, I think that's one certainly program that we're very proud of. Um, here at Lawrence, we're also very proud of our dual enrollment programs in the school. Um, we have at least um, four in math, three in science, and four in English that we offer. Wow. So um, we focus there as well. Yep, and obviously another great crowd here tonight at Kai's Field. Always a, a good atmosphere for the high school football games. Friday night under the lights. They yep. love it. As you can see on your screen, we're talking with Principal Mark Campbell. The athletic director is uh, Dave Packard. Of course, Lawrence High School, located in Fairfield, Maine, uh, serves the towns of Fairfield, Albion, Benton, and Clinton. Yes. Um, and, any rivalry in, in, within the school amongst those communities, or is it? Uh, no, we, when we come together, we're family. We're bulldogs. Uh, Lawrence uh, dropped to Class B in 2013, previously in uh, Class A. Been a lot of changes uh, in high school sports, uh, class-wise, and uh, this year uh, teams playing teams from the Southern Division, also playing at times teams uh, from different uh, divisions within their own region. So a lot of things still being sorted out depending upon the sport. And it was nice to bring back the rivalry between uh, Winslow and Lawrence this yes. fall. Um, it was a nice crowd that came up from Winslow that greeted our crowd here, and it was a great game for everybody. Yeah, four uh, state championships in football for Lawrence High School, 73, 83, 84. And uh, 
2006. And um, just looking across the way at, uh, at Lawrence High School, um, talk about uh, the infrastructure. Anything going on there with your school? So we've done some upgrades in our science labs. Um, the last two summers we've put in a lot of time and money into getting those up to the state of the art. Um, Dr. Baker's also purchased um, a new anatomy table for our biology department. Nice. So, um, the only one in the state of Maine in the high school. All right. Well, uh, your school on display here tonight. Again, the uh, turnout by the crowd. Uh, great performance here at halftime by the uh, band and other members of uh, your school here. Congratulations on everything that's going on, uh, Mark Campbell, and uh, thanks for joining us here at the half. Thank you, Nam. Appreciate right. you show, coast, uh, show, showing our team here tonight. All right, very good. Mark Campbell, principal of Lawrence High School, joining us here in the halftime report. All right, we'll take our final break. When we come back, we'll have second half action here on the BDN Main Game of the Week. Exclusive savings are happening at a Tradewinds location near you. Save big with our happy hour specials every day from 4 to 6 p.m. Grab a family size one topping pizza, $6.99. Get one pound of our tender boneless wings, $6.99. A full pound of our locally famous buffalo wings, $6.99. Or one pound of our crispy french fries, just $2.99. Get this bundle deal and save 50%. Score even more with extended hours on Sunday at a Tradewinds location near you. It's your Monday morning, and your Friday night. It's your suitcase, your tour guide, and your photo booth. It's your new beginning, and your fresh start. It's your library, your hotspot, and your movie theater. It's your car. Find it at Quirk. If time is infinite, why is there never enough of it? A John Deere One Family Tractor with Quick Park lets you attach and go. iMatch Quick Hitch gives you more time for what you love. So it takes less work to do more work. Auto Connect Drive Over Mower Deck, done. They're not making any more land, but there's plenty of time if you know where to look. Visit Greenway Equipment in Bangor and Ellsworth or find us online at greenwayequipment.com. Choosing the right school for driver's ed has never been more important. Northeast Driving School has been the leader in driver training since 1969. Greater Bangor's number one team of instructors is experienced, professional, and dedicated to its students. Northeast offers a variety of weekday and weekend courses. Call 942-1769 or sign up at northeastdrivingschool.com. Welcome back to Kai's Field as the uh, halftime festivities continue. Senior night here at Lawrence High School. Tremendous uh, crowd here to watch this uh, matchup between the Mesolonsky Eagles and the Lawrence Bulldogs. Good rivalry between these two schools. And uh, we talked with uh, Principal Mark Campbell from uh, Lawrence High School. Let's talk a little bit about Mesolonsky High School. Uh, Mesolonsky High School, uh, founded in 1969, the uh, principal at Mesolonsky High School is uh, Paula Callan and uh, the athletic director Tommy Hill located in Oakland, Maine, Aaron and uh, they get uh, students from a number of communities including Oakland, Belgrade, China, Rome and what's this other one? Well I told you there were some magical places I'm of course talking about China, Maine very magical in China now Disney uh, it's supposed to be Sydney but our uh, Mark Paulette who does such a great job with the graphics uh, let me know earlier today that he had put uh, Disney instead of Sydney, and, well, we just decided we wanted to go with it because we thought it was kind of amusing. But Sydney is where they draw from in all actuality. And uh, a notable alum, uh, Sam Dexter, a very talented athlete at Mesolonsky High School, a very talented baseball player, drafted in the 23rd round of the 2016 Major League Baseball draft by the Chicago White Sox. Aaron, he played in uh, Class A ball this year, uh, batted 267, a couple long balls, uh, 12 RBIs while appearing in 36 games. Uh, he's hit uh, 248 with four homers, 29 RBIs in two minor league seasons, appearing in 83 games. So we'll see what happens in the career, the professional career of Sam Dexter. But just to uh, get drafted 
that high by a Major League Baseball team uh, speaks to the talent of, of Sam. Yeah, and I mean, he, he went to USM, played under Ed Flaherty, uh, had probably one of the best careers you've ever seen out of a kid out of USM at shortstop. So he has been uh, on the radar for a while. And don't be surprised to see him continue to move up the ranks because the kid is very talented athletically, was a very good football player as well as obviously a baseball player. So he is a very good athlete. All right, here we go with half number two, 21 to 13, our score. Mesolonsky on top. Lawrence is going to get the football first. And the kick by Berger Roy, a one-hopper. Picked up uh, smartly there by the Bulldogs and taking it up the center of the field. I believe that is Dodge for Lawrence. Jared Dodge, the 6'1", 175-pound senior, will give uh, the Bulldogs good field position. They'll start it at their own 40-yard line. And I feel like you could have recorded yourself saying that and then just yeah. replayed it at the beginning of every drive. Both teams. Between the 30, I mean, yeah. 32 uh, has been about the uh, worst start for either side here tonight. That's where Mesolonski started for their first uh, drive, scoring drive of the night. Players in motion here for the Bulldogs. Schooler and Trask, the uh, twins to the left, dodge the uh, single man on the right side, and the pass intended here for Trask is incomplete. Yeah. Defending that play for Mesolonski, number 42 there. That is uh, Noah Tuttle. And I think some of the guys on the sideline for Lawrence wanted some pass interference there, but I think that was more just the Lawrence player ran into him than it was he tried to stop him. I mean, he just kind of was in the path and ran into him. There was no, you know, he didn't try to interfere with him. It just kind of happened. Braden Ballard has the play from the Lawrence sideline. They're on the near side. Mesolonski across the way. And Ballard hands it off. And it's going to go to Matthew White. And the fullback will pick up just two on that second down play. So second down, pardon me, third down and long for the Bulldogs. Make it third and seven after a three-yard pickup there by White. This is where the, the Bulldogs got themselves in a bit of trouble in the, the early in the first quarter as they found themselves with second and long and then third and long. And They're not a team that necessarily wants to have those types of situations. No team does, but especially with Lawrence where you want to be able to have third and four, third and three to convert those rushing plays, now you're almost forced to pass it. Lawrence had some momentum at the tail end of that first half, but it's going to be three and out here for the Bulldogs. Pass incomplete, intended there for Logan Fortin. And the punt unit will come on for Lawrence. A chance here with a good kick to tweak this uh, field position battle just a little bit. Nick Puglia there, the middle linebacker for Mesolonski, just about had himself an interception. I mean, that ball went right through his hands. I thought for sure he was going to make the play on that to give him some great field position, but not to be. Tyler Lewis, the deep man, the uh, snap is fumbled there momentarily. It's going to be a one hopper fielded by Lewis. Gets around one defender, but quickly met at the 30-yard line. Nice tackle there by Fortin, Logan Fortin. In on the tackle, and the Eagles will start it at their own 30-yard line. They have I, an eight-point lead. I am surprised that Lewis went after that ball. The one-hopper there, he had a defender right next to him. I thought for sure he was going to let that ball go by him because that's a poison play. You don't want those, but nice play to grab it, save some yardage off the bounce, and get a couple yards of his own. He has very good vision. You could see him looking upfield there as he was fielding that football, now Balboni, the handoff, gets the handoff there. He'll pick up a couple. Austin Pelletier, injured uh, right knee, we believe. He's on the sideline using crutches. Yeah, got and it. And LaRouche uh, for Lawrence on the near sideline, also using crutches. Got to think that's probably not a good sign for coming back into this ball game. Hopefully they get healthy as soon as possible. Second down and eight. There's that play again. Inside handoff to uh, Balboni, and then crisscrossing is Lewis. 
He gets the feed from Balboni, as you see right here, and he'll advance the ball about five yards. They've used this play about four times here tonight, and they've had a lot of success. Good play on second down to get some. Now all of a sudden you've got probably, what, third and four or so, maybe even third and three, so you've got an opportunity here for a first down that's not too far away. Here's the throw by Thurston. It is complete, and it's going to be a first down. Nice second effort there by Cameron Goff. He was hit short of the first down marker, but stayed on his feet, lunged forward to the 41-and-a-half-yard uh, line of Mesolonski. So another first down for the Eagles. Nice play right there by Goff to spin out of the way and get those extra yardage. He knew where the first down marker was. He knew he wasn't there, but he made sure that he got there. And the handoff. This is Balboni. Nothing there for him. There'll be no gain on first down. A rare no gain, especially after that first possession for the Eagles. Nice job up front by the Lawrence Bulldogs finding some areas to push and making sure that there was a line of scrimmage going backward as opposed to forwards, and that's the end result is Eagles unable to get anything going on that play. Second and 10. Lewis in motion, gets the handoff, turns it upfield, spins, breaks a tackle, and he'll almost get to midfield. He is running very hard here tonight. He's slippery, like I said. It almost sometimes looks like he's about to get taken down for a loss of yards, and you see him in motion here. He gets Look the handoff. And Look how quickly he turns right, yeah. right there. I mean, he sees that hole, and he just, he's just so aggressive. And like I said, slippery he takes the spin move between two defenders and then gets an extra four yards on the play. Great moves. Third down and three once again for Mesolonski. That was the situation in their last set of downs. And it's going to be Lewis getting the pitch from Thurston. Again, turns it upfield. He's got the first down and more inside the 45. Yeah, they're, they're, just, they're keeping him in motion. They're not lining him up in any specific spot in the field, and it's really throwing the Bulldogs off because they don't know what to expect. You see him there getting the handoff on the fly. He's got that momentum already. Just a matter of making a turn and going for it, and he keeps getting these first downs. I wouldn't say it's an expansive uh, playbook being used here tonight by Mesolonski, but they've got four, about four or five plays that they've had so much success here tonight, and they are just different enough that it is keeping the Lawrence Bulldog defense uh, on their heels, and they continue to march up the field, and now we're going to get an extra five yards uh, tacked on here. Yeah, you've kind of got thunder and lightning on this that team. Uh, penalty there, did you see? I'm not sure what that was, actually. A thunder and lightning. You've got Balboni, who we haven't really seen in the second half yet, but he goes up the middle. Lewis, the lightning on the edges here, and you're going to see him again with it. Lewis gets the pitch from Thurston. It takes about uh, four Bulldogs to bring him down. Some gang tackling there by Lawrence after a four-yard pickup by Tyler Lewis who had touchdowns in the first half of 44 yards and 40 yards. And what's happening with him too, I mean, they keep putting him in motion, keep putting him in motion. Well, it's because he, he can, he's got some speed. So you get him in motion in the backfield and then when he hits the line, he's just bursting through it. And Lawrence can't catch up because they're not going full speed, but he is. Now it's gonna be Balboni's turn. He backs his way into that Lawrence defense. It'll, uh, gain him an extra yard or two. And for the third time in this drive, it's going to be third down and about three yards, maybe four yards this time. That's the sign of an efficient offense when you're running the ball. You get those three, four yard carries every single time. Get yourself some manageable third downs. And we're seeing how it's going for Mesolonski. They're just, it's like clockwork getting these third down conversions. Balboni the call, Balboni inside the 30 down to about the 26 yard line. And that'll be another first down for Mesolonski. This time throwing off the Bulldogs a little bit, going off to the right side instead of the left side. And you see him here getting the, the sweep and off he goes. He gets himself 
Nice little first down. A little, you know, you keep going to the left, keep going to the left. They're going to think you're going to keep going to the left, and this time they go to the right. Good block in there by number 57, Brandon Veyu. First and 10 once again, back to Lewis. And Lawrence trying to string this one out, but Lewis gets around the left end, and he's plowing his way towards that first down marker. And it looks like he may have another first down here for Meselonski. Looked like they had Lewis hemmed in towards the sideline there, Aaron. They were stringing it out where the Bulldogs uh, defenders there, but once again, Lewis just too quick, got around that edge. He did, and again, it comes back to what I said a couple plays ago where they've already got him in motion full speed ahead. Lawrence there had him in the backfield, but when you've got a guy as fast as Lewis going full speed, you can't tackle him. He gets around the edge. Now it's Balboni working the right side. He's got some room. Drops the shoulder there. Good yardage on first down. Nesolonski now inside the 10 yard line. Balboni here going to the right again. You're gonna see it. They keep, they keep running these you know, same three or four plays like you said, but Balboni got himself ahead of steam on this one. Going to the right, he's got the blockers ahead. He hits the hole where he needs to. Nice run again, just fundamental football. They're doing all the little things they need to do. Those blockers, we don't give them enough credit. They're, they're leading him every single play. From the eight yard line, Lewis, who tries the middle this time, doesn't have as much success as he has had going to the outside, but he will pick up some positive yardage there. Takes it down to within a yard of that first down marker, which is at the five yard line. So once again, Meselonski knocking on the door here, leading it by eight. BDN main game of the week here tonight at Kai's Field, brought to you by Quirk Auto Group. It's your car, find it at Quirk. They've got a lot of cars, I can tell you that. So if you need a car, you can probably find one there. Probably can find a couple hundred there. Balboni plowing his way forward. He'll get inside the five, holding on to that football. He's got both arms wrapped around it. Two turnovers in the ball game, one for each side in the first half. Yeah, he remembers what happened last time Meselonski was here with about a minute to go before halftime and coughed the ball went away and Lawrence took it over and almost managed to score that in the half. Going to be first and goal at the two for Meselonski. Once again, uh, Lawrence reeling defensively. See if they can come up with another turnover here. And the handoff inside, and that'll be another touchdown. I believe it was... Balboni, and it is Balboni, the touchdown run there for Meselonski. Tack on six more. It's now 27 13, Eagles. Yeah, and you see him here. I mean, this is just basic football. You just get the line, get the push. Balboni's a big kid. He gets hit, doesn't matter. He spins off, it gets him for the touchdown right there. And I just I love the formation they've got going on right now. They've got three uh, players in their backfield that can get the ball in any given moment. And Goff, Balboni, and of course, Lewis, and this time it's Balboni getting into the end zone. On for the extra points. Kyle Berger Roy, and a fake here. It's going to be Thurston, and he's going to come up short on the attempt at a two point conversion there. So it will remain a 14 point lead for Meselonski. I guess worth the, uh, the try there, Aaron, although an extra point. Uh, would have made it a little bit tougher for the Bulldogs. At that point, it would have been a 15-point lead, now a 14-point lead after the uh, attempt is denied. Yeah, that, I mean, that's an interesting call. Instead of forcing uh, Lawrence to have to go for two on one of these attempts here, now they've just got to you know, score the touchdown, kick the field goal. Now that said, and you never know if a guy's going to make that extra point, and the team may decide that they'd rather take their chances and go for two at the end of the game to try to get that extra point in the win, but they almost got it. They almost pulled that one off. I'm guessing Lawrence wasn't expecting it, so some interesting play calling there by Meselonski. 4-13 left to go here in the third quarter. Once again, we believe the winner of this ballgame, they'll definitely get a bye in the first round of the Class B North playoffs. Solid chance that the winner will get the number one seed. We're on the short end of the stick against the Brunswicks, which is uh, may 
remain in that number five spot where they may be taking on the Lawrence Bulldogs. Brewer beat Lawrence in the uh, season opener by two. And here come the Bulldogs once again. This is Skola. He's got a chance. He's breaking away from the Meselowski coverage team. Skola will take it home. No flags on the field. Talk about a response from Lawrence. Schooler into the end zone, and it's now 27 to 19. Yeah, he just, it, it, you weren't sure he had the room, right? But you could see that there was some space there, and you said it earlier, Jimmy, shifty. And he yeah. finds himself, I mean, at that point, there's not a guy within five yards of him, because he's also pretty darn fast, and you see it right there. Easy touchdown for him after he got about the 50 yard line. Great play to get him open. And you've got to give credit to both teams on their special teams because there's been a ton of really good blocking throughout this game. Now Schooler taking it up the middle there and got through that uh, first line of defense by the coverage unit of Mesolonski and then he had about two or three Eagles with him but he broke away from those uh, Mesolonski defenders and cruised in the end zone for a touchdown so just like that and the extra point is good by Lawrence, just like that. It is now just a seven-point lead for Masalonski. Just when you think the Eagles may be taking charge in this ball game, you get a play like that from Isaiah Schooler. 5'10", 165-pound junior. He's had a good night here tonight, and that is just what the doctor ordered if you are a Lawrence Bulldog fan. Yeah, and you couldn't have planned that any better. And now for Mesolonski, you've got an offensive line that just had a long extended drive. You've got running backs that had a ton of running plays. You've got yourself in a situation where you, you may have a tired offense, and now all of a sudden you've got to come back out on the field after, you know, a two-minute breather, if that. So, Are you ever tired on offense? Well, I mean, you're it's always, always the defense is tired. I don't know. Some of those big guys on the offensive line, I mean, they've, they've got some stamina, but... As long as you're scoring, I don't think you're tired. I bet they get tired. Well, they get tired because they're playing on both sides of the football. That's what that, <laughs> they that never is, get a break. That is also a very good point. A lot of these guys are playing both sides of the ball. Okay, so the uh, Bulldogs here on senior night. With a little extra spunk in their step. After the return by Isaiah Schooler. After the Balboni touchdown from Mesolonski here in this second half. So... Big crowd, and they are being entertained here tonight. A good boot. And it's going to be fielded by Balboni at about the 16-yard line. Takes a turn to the left, trying to get to the outside. Room. Now cuts it back upfield. And he'll get it to about the 32-yard line before he is wrangled down. And that is where Mesolonski will start this drive. They have a seven-point lead. Have we seen a team start inside their own 30 at this game? I don't think so. That is incredible. I mean, you know, typically with the high school football kickers, you don't get a ton of length on your kicks, but still both these teams just very good at starting in very good field position. Tell you the body language on this near side. We are on the home side here at Kai's Field, but the body language uh, did a 180 uh, with that return by Schooler. Carry here by Cameron Goff. And... Looks like that'll be no gain on first down, so the ball remains at the 32 of Mesolonski, and it'll be second down and 10. Now we have an official's timeout here. I don't know if he found something on that football. And Checking the run. air pressure, Jim. Uh-oh. Yeah, Let's not yeah. get into that. We right. don't have enough time here tonight. To I think I just saw Roger Goodell come into uh, Kai's field, so uh, they got to make sure everything's you know hunky-dory here. And maybe a foreign substance on that football, so they're going to get a new football from that Mesolonski sideline. Great to have you with us for this uh, very entertaining ball game here tonight uh, from Fairfield, Maine, Lawrence High School, 27 to 20. Mesolonski with the lead, Jim Churchill, along with Aaron Jackson, and the entire Sportsnet Maine, the BDN Maine Game of the Week crew. Kim Mitchell from Digital Workshop is running the show here once again. Ably assisted by Mark Pauletta on replays to his right. Upstairs, Juan Lesnet on camera one, and Chris Parent making his debut here tonight on the BDN Main Game of the Week. 
Here's the uh, money man tonight for Mesolonsky. That's Tyler Lewis, and we got a turnover. Wow. Second turnover tonight for Mesolonsky. A fumble here by Lewis. And talk about good field position, Aaron. Lawrence is going to have their best field position of the night after that second eagle turnover. Yeah, and you, you see what happens here. I mean, it's just ball security is what it is. You see Balboni has it. and That's Lewis. Oops, sorry, Lewis has it, and he's going to get stripped. And just, you can't, you can't have things like that, especially on your own side of the field. And you talked about momentum. It's all in Lawrence's side of the field now. I mean, it has turned so quickly in this game. Here is Schooler, the man most responsible for the uh, turn of events here in this third quarter. But uh, he is a caller down there after picking up a yard, a very tough yard for number two. 2.45 left to go here in the third quarter. Lawrence a chance to tie it up here on their home field. Senior night two, can't forget that. These guys are pumped up, they want this game. Ballard rolling to his right, pressure. Lewis is there, a flag is down, the ball is flung out there. It's gonna be incomplete. Fortin had a chance for it. Logan Fortin, the tight end, it was off his fingertips. Left up in the air there momentarily, giving Mesolonski a chance to pick it off. The penalty looks like it's gonna go against Lawrence based upon what I'm seeing from the uh, far side line. As looks like uh, Mesolonski's gonna not take the penalty, so it's gonna bring up third down and nine. And Braden Ballard, I, I don't know how well our cameras caught this because they were probably following the play downfield, but Tyler Lewis came in and gave him oh. a shot. He was in his face. On that right knee, Ballard coming up a little slow, a little tentative. He was kind of rubbing that right knee. He's going to stay in the game. I think he's okay, but, man, did he get hit hard right after that ball left his fingertips. Ballard has a sign from Ken Lindloff, the uh, offensive coordinator for Lawrence. Herson, longtime coach, 13 years, I believe, for Coach Herson here in Fairfield. Ballard going to the air again, slings it left to Dodge. Dodge breaks a tackle. Dodge dives inside the 30. He'll get it up to the uh, 27 of Mesolonski. It's going to be short of the first down by about a yard. Good effort here by Dodge for Lawrence. And if you're pass Lawrence, into the flat and a screen pass there, and look at the effort there by Dodge, Jared Dodge. Matthew White in the backfield, Trask in motion, Ballard rolling to his right now, gets it to Schooler, who evades the defender but loses his footing, but he's got the first down. He gets it to the 24, that'll move the chains. And the effort, uh, we're, the individual effort we're getting here from some of these Bulldogs in this possession is tremendous. Shifty. I mean, you, you said it a couple times, I've said it a couple times, but it's the most accurate description of what you can say Guys uh, there about Schooler. I mean, just... A little sidestep move. And if he doesn't fall down there, he's got another 5, 10 yards to rumble for. So just a, a great play, great awareness there to make sure he knew he got the first down. Ballot under center. White gets the call. White, again, will fall forward. That's what you want your running backs to do. And he'll pick up a few there on that uh, first down play. Maybe two-yard pickup. It's going to bring up second down and eight. Again, next Friday night, we will have the BDN main game of the week. We just don't know where we will be. We will figure it out tomorrow once all the results come in from this uh, final week of the regular season. Looking forward to the postseason. Ballard back to the air, pumps once. Second pump is a fire to the left and is complete to Jared Dodge. He is spun out of bounds at the 14. They're diversifying is what they're doing. They're seeing, you know, what can we get away with here? They're playing these plays out to the flat. Another nice play by Dodge, who's been critical on this drive. And just sure-handed, you know? You know when you throw him the football, he's gonna come away with it, and he does so again there and gets some nice yardage for a first. Another first down for Lawrence. 
Just a seven point lead, waning seconds here of the third quarter. Under the lights at Kai's Fields. Here's Schooler, here's Schooler inside the 10. Spins his way down to about the six yard line. And the march continues for Lawrence. They mark the ball at the seven. Nice spin move there by Schooler to find himself some running room and set him up nicely here with second down and three as they'll maybe try to get one more play out of this quarter before we go to the fourth. Seven yard pickup on first down, second down and three. Now it's Mesolonski playing on their heels. Quarterback keeper here and Ballard will take it up to the five, but that's gonna leave the Bulldogs one yard shy. Certainly in uh, four down territory here, well into Mesolonski territory. The horn sounds and that will do it for the third quarter. Lawrence trying to tie this one up. They trail it 27 to 20. After three, this is the BDN Main Game of the Week. It's your picnic table <laughs> and your park bench. It's your hotel room, your office, and your nursery. It's your first date and a shoulder to cry on. It's your barbershop, your dance floor, and your toolbox. It's your car. Find it at Quirk. What do you get when you combine pure diesel power with 1,600 pounds of raw iron and steel? Meet the 2R Series from John Deere. Up to 32 horsepower, four-wheel drive, cruise control, and a six-year powertrain warranty that's best in its class. This rugged workhorse won't make your breakfast, but with quick attach features, you can do pretty much anything else. Ride one today at your John Deere dealer. Visit Greenway Equipment in Bangor and Ellsworth, or find us online at greenwayequipment.com. Welcome back to Kai's Field and the BDN Main Game of the Week. Jim Churchill, Aaron Jackson with you tonight. Thanks for joining us. This game will be available on demand uh, coming up on Wednesday at driveshowmain.com. That's driveshowmain.com. You can catch this game and all the other games we have covered so far here in this 2017 season at driveshowmain.com. You can watch a quarter. You can watch the whole game if you want. All right, Lawrence with the football, and it's going to be Braden Ballard diving forward. Objective number one is to get that first down, and I believe the big body of Ballard got enough there, and that is the case. So it's going to be first down and goal for Lawrence here. Looks like they're going to mark the ball at about the three-yard line. First and goal, a touchdown will bring the Bulldogs to within one. And no rocket science here, Jim. Don't be shocked if they just literally let Braden do it again. Just, just take the ball. Go right up the middle with it. He's 6'3". Just fall forward and you're going to have a touchdown pretty soon. Ballard under center. Going to roll to his right and ooh, maybe the Bulldogs got a little too fancy there. Ballard has had some success just diving up the middle. They tried to uh, get him running to the right there and uh, he got tackled for a significant loss. Yeah, don't mess with success. They messed with success there and you see the result. Nice play by Cameron Goff to take him down and now all of a sudden you find yourself in a situation where you're gonna have some yardage to make up, more maybe more than you'd like to have in front of you. Matthew White in the backfield with Ballard. Schooler and Dodge to the left. Ballard looking across the middle. He's got Fort and wide open. And he goes into the end zone untouched. Well-conceived play there by Lawrence. They execute and give the Bulldogs six more, and indeed they are to within one point of Mesolonski. 27-26, our score. He was wide open. Yeah, I mean, you just see it right here. Nice play coming across. Julian Edelman-like, yeah. wide open. I mean, there's, there's no one, you know, maybe even within 10 yards of him. That's just... That's just good football by Lawrence right there. Great play call by their offensive coordinator. Extra point is good. And how about this? Fourth quarter just underway. 10.43 left to go in the ball game. And we are tied at 27 between 
Mesolonski, the number three team in Class B North coming in, and the number 14, the Lawrence Bulldogs, knotted up here as we head down the home stretch. All right, let's look at the scoreboard once again. A Brewer at home tonight against Brunswick. The Witches have come from behind. They lead it 27 to 20. Oceanside leading Belfast 67 to 18. It is Foxcroft over Mattanaw Cook up in Lincoln 26 to nothing. Herman, the advantage over Waterville 26 to 13. Cheveris and Oxford Hills tied at seven. Skowhegan has come back against Mount Blue. The Indians now lead that one 24-14. Gardner and Coney in a good one tonight. They are knotted at 7. Ellsworth, 48. Washington Academy, 12. Lewiston over Edward Little in a rivalry game. 20-8 to eight the score in that one. Major League Baseball score from the ALCS. Yankees a 3-2 lead in that series against the Houston Astros. No score tonight in game 6 in the top of the 3rd. Philadelphia lead over the Celtics, 63-56 uh, midway through the 3rd quarter. And Miami of Ohio playing UMaine hockey tonight in Orono. It is Miami 6 and Maine 3 after 2. This ball bouncing down. Balboni finally gets a handle on it around the 18-yard line looking for some room, and there's nothing there. Great pursuit. And we talked about the change of body language for this Lawrence sideline after the return by Schooler. Another touchdown since then. And now the kickoff coverage team getting into the act. Yeah, and I think this one was Jimmy Dixon making the play for the Bulldogs. And you're right, Jim, all that momentum that Mesolonski had early in this game, it's gone. Every bit of it has gone the Bulldogs' way right now, and you just see another example of that right here. There's a couple of guys that run to the football, and they just they keep pressuring, they keep pressuring, and it's going to actually be number 25. That's Paul Morneau that makes the tackle. Incomplete pass here on the first down play. Pass intended for Cameron Goff from Thurston. They do not connect. Second down and 10 coming up. Twenty-seven all here at Kai's Field. Big crowd, senior night, rivalry game. Winner gets a bye in the first round of the Class B North playoffs. And they go back oh to the boy. ground. It's Tyler Lewis. And Lewis was finding all kinds of running room in the first half and on into the third quarter. But over the last few minutes, not much running room there for Lewis, and he also had the fumble. Dominic Blaisdell with the nice play right there. He was fired up. You need a big play right now. Tyler Lewis needs to get the ball. He needs to get to the outside, and he needs to get them 10, 15, 20 yards because they've got to feel good about something because right now you can see it in their body language. They're, they're, they're pushing back, but not hard enough. A loss of two, third and 12. Thurston of the year fires it downfield. The pass is incomplete into the hands of Cameron Goff, but he got hit hard there, could not hold on to the football, and the Eagles are gonna have to punt it away. From this angle, it looked like he had a good play at it. You see a nice pass, Goff running kind of a slant route or just running down towards the middle of the field, and he gets his hands on it, but you're right, a nice play right More there. No again. Yeah, to break that ball loose, hit him hard. That ball pops out, and you've got yourself an incompletion, and Lawrence with a chance as hot as they are right now on offense to take the lead coming up here. Good field position coming Kyle up too, I would think. Berger Roy, the kick, a very high kick to midfield, and Schooler's gonna bobble it. And did he fall on it? I think he did as uh, Goff tries to wrestle it from Isaiah Schooler. Close call there for Schooler and the Bulldogs, but he does manage to track down that football and the Bulldogs, once again, will start with great field position. They'll start at the Mesolonsky 47. I mean, how about Schooler? Obviously, you, you never want to fumble a ball like that, but I mean, the wherewithal to immediately just pounce on it, uh, that's impressive. That was, that was a good play by him to, to salvage that. Ballard, the quarterback, from the shotgun, gives it to Schooler. Schooler trying to break away from a, a shirt tail tackle there by number 68, that's Matt Trembley for Mesolonski. He slowed down Schooler, but Schooler kept those legs churning, got it up to the 40-yard line, and it's going to be second down and three for Mesolonski. B 
BDN Main Game of the Week brought to you by Greenway Equipment for the best in John Deere sales and service. It's Greenway Equipment with locations in Bangor and Ellsworth. Visit them at greenwayequipment.com. Greenway Equipment, nothing runs like a deer. This pass intended for Fortin. It's going to be picked off by Cameron Goff. Turnover here, a big one forced by Mesolonski. Looked like Lawrence had all the momentum, but Braden Ballard's pass picked off by Goff, who basically stepped into the passing lane, Aaron. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a situation here where all of a sudden all that momentum goes Mesolonski's way. All it takes is one play, you force that turnover, and just like that, you're going to see him going the other way with the football. And Well, all of a sudden now Mesolonski's got to be feeling good. They've got some momentum, and by the way, I just saw number 19, Braden Ballard. He is limping off the field. Looks like a right knee issue, so their quarterback for Lawrence out of the football game, and he just collapsed onto the sidelines with rolling his right knee. So in a tie ball game, Mesolonski with the football now. They start at the uh, 39, their own 39, and they will go nowhere again. The pursuit and the gang tackling by that Lawrence defense. So suddenly the Mesolonski offense is sputtering here. Bulldog defense rising up. We got another Bulldog player staying on the field, but limping out there is uh, Paul Morneau, who's been stellar defensively, especially here in this second half. Right knee for him, too. He's trying to shake it off. Let's see how long he can stay in. Here's Balboni going up the middle. He'll lunge forward for a few, but still not much happening with that run game now for Mesolonski. Morneau still limping, trying to shake it off but there's nothing to shake off I don't think he can he's he's trying though he's a gamer staying out there on defense both teams coming off tough losses in week seven Veselonski losing to Coney 27-17 of course Lawrence in a shootout against Scowig and they fell 58 to 56 third down and six big time third down play here Goff on the move, Thurston looking right. He's got a man and the pass is knocked down. Wow, what a job there by Schooler closing on that play. Looked like Lewis was gonna make the catch near the first down line, but Schooler came from nowhere, got the right hand in there and knocked the pass to the ground. So we had second and third quarter where both offenses you know, just kept scoring and scoring. Now all of a sudden fourth quarter, it doesn't seem like either one of them wanna take the ball. Now, I'm interested to see what happens here for Lawrence when they get this ball back. Their quarterback is he's trying his darndest to get back onto this field, Braden Ballard, but he's got a noticeable limp there on the sideline as he's trying to make some cuts and stretching out his right knee, but something's not right. And a timeout called here by Mesolonski as it uh, looks like they were short a player on the field there, so Coach... Uh, Brad Bishop forced to uh, call the timeout. He's not happy with that uh, Eagle sideline across the way. Might need that timeout later on in the ball game here. We are down to the final seven and a half minutes in this 27-27 game. BDN main game of the week uh, brought to you by Trade Winds Markets. Don't forget about the Crazy Boat Football Contest. It's underway at your local Trade Winds. Pretty simple, find your trade wins market. There are 12 of them. Locate the Crazy About Football display. Pick the total score in the Patriots game that week. Pat's taking on Atlanta, Aaron, quickly. Uh, point total? I'm going to say 64. All right, the That's weekly prize, a $50 yeah. gas card. Trade wins markets, your corner store and more. Okay, Burger Roy. Back to punt for Mesolonski. Back deep is Schooler. He's at the 30 of Lawrence. It's a line drive, wobbling kick. Schooler makes the catch, and he's a hit immediately. Great job there by number 11. That's Nate Perkins. He got downfield quickly and made the tackle. So the Bulldogs are going to start at their own 29-yard line. Early on in this game, even in the third quarter, every team, every time getting good field position, now you're starting to see, I don't know if it's the defenses catching up to the offenses, if it's the offenses getting tired, but both sides of the ball struggle a little bit more and they're not getting as good field position as they once had. 
All right, Braden Ballard, the quarterback, threw an interception in the last possession for the Bulldogs. Go back, goes back to his money man here tonight, Isaiah Schooler, who turns it upfield for a three-yard pickup. And the story in the first half was uh, Tyler Lewis. Biggest story for Mesolonski had the two long touchdown runs of 44 and 40 yards. Schooler really got the Bulldogs back into the ball game here in the second half. They were down by 14, and he took the uh, kickoff back for a touchdown. Another touchdown by Balboni for Lawrence, and that's where we stand, tied at 27. Here's a first down run for Schooler again. He's up to the 45 of the Bulldogs. He is dangerous. I get the feeling we're going to see a lot of him. Ballard banged up. Uh, kind of limping over to the sideline after every play. I'm not sure how mobile he is right now. Schooler has been just getting big chunk after big chunk, so I have a feeling you're going to be calling his name a lot here on this drive as time winds down here. 6.30 left to go in this game. Yeah, let's not forget that uh, Bulldog offensive line as well. They've been doing a, a great job here, especially uh, lately. Here is Schooler again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. He's trying to hold on to the football as uh, an Eagle was trying to take it away from him right there. Number 52, Nick Pouliot, was trying to rip that ball away from Schooler, but he held on for an eight-yard pickup. And I wonder at this point, too, on the Lawrence sideline, if they're saying, guys, before the play, take a little bit more time off the clock. You want to leave Mesolonski with as little time as possible should you get a score here. I know you've got to get that score first, Probably thinking ahead maybe a little bit too far, but I could see a situation where they start to run some time off the clock. And once again, the Bulldogs will move it upfield. This time it's Matthew White. And he picks up the first down there, big hole. Quick handoff, quick hitter there, White. Again, getting through that Mesolonski defensive line deep into the backfield. And Lawrence trying to take their first lead of the night here in the fourth quarter. It is pretty crazy to think Mesolonski has led this game pretty much from start to finish at this point, but White there looking for a yard or two, he ends up getting eight or nine. Looks like they had this game in the bag up 27-13, but when these uh, two programs get locked up, you never know what's going to happen. It certainly has been an entertaining night here tonight, and another solid pickup there for the Bulldogs. Schooler again on the left-hand side, yeah. I mean, he's just, every time they give him the ball, they're getting something productive, and that's all you can ask for is, you know, you give me the four or the five, give me eight or nine, that's even better. But right now, Mesolowski's defense looks a little tired. They look like they need a breather. Ballard, going to go to the air, flips it to the right side, pass complete to White. White is taken down at about the 17-yard line, tackle made by Josh Goff, but not before. Another first down pickup for the Bulldogs. You see uh, Braden there a little bit slower, but uh, effective nonetheless, able to hit his guy in stride, and you get another first down here. And Lawrence, they're sniffing it. They can smell that end zone now at what, the 16, 17-yard line. They're close. Ballard. The give here to Isaiah Schooler. Schooler still on his feet. Schooler zigging and zagging his way into the end zone. Is he in the end zone? No, they're going to mark it down just shy of the goal line. The ball ended up in the end zone, but I guess uh, the knee went down uh, just before he got the necessary yardage there for the touchdown. Should probably just change his name from Schooler to Shifty. I mean, you really nailed it when you said that in the first half, that he's just one of those guys that it doesn't seem to matter where you are, he just goes around you. I you know, know I mean, he made five, six, seven guys misses on this play, and it's just, just incredible football from him. And I was just about to say, I know what I'm going to call here. Quarterback sneak, it'll be Ballard, he's in, touchdown. And the Lawrence Bulldogs with... Three minutes and 55 seconds left to go in the ball game. Have their first lead of the night. Second touchdown of the night for the quarterback, Braden Ballard. And now they'll try to tack on the extra point and make it a seven-point advantage. As Mesolonski will have plenty of time once they get the football. 
The kick is up and the kick is good. Putting it through the uprights is Zach Nickerson. And the Bulldogs on senior night here at Kyes Field have a 33-27 lead. Yeah, no need to remake the wheel when you've got a guy that's 6'3", 215. Even if he is a little hobbled, it doesn't matter. You're going to him when you need one yard. It's easy quarterback sneak into the end zone for the touchdown. And Lawrence, we said, I think it was, what, late third quarter, Jim, you said that momentum, you can feel it switching. You can feel the sideline over here gaining momentum getting excited, getting into this football game more than they had been. It's shown and the crowd is fired up. Well, it was about a, uh, I don't have the exact yardage, but 75, 70 yards on a return by Isaiah Schooler really turned this ball game around after Meselonski had made it 27 to 13. You look down on that Lawrence sideline, uh, players looking down at the, the ground, the shoulders kind of shrugged, but uh, Schooler, Returns the kickoff for six, and since then it's been all Bulldogs. They have outscored Mesolonski now 20 to nothing over that period. Or check that, 21 to nothing over that period. And for Mesolonski at this point, don't hang your heads. Time for that second win to kick in. You don't have your best player in Austin Pelletier. You know he's out. Lewis has been good. You've got to find a way to get him the football, get him some space because he can still operate in it. Side winding kick, and it wow. could be a good one, but it's going to go into the end zone. Look Boy, that. That, <laughs> that came to a stop just a couple of yards in the end zone as Balboni was tracking it. And uh, fortunately for Mesolonski, it did trickle into the end zone. So they will start with their worst field position of the night, their own 20-yard line. They need... 80 yards here to tie this one up. They have plenty of time, 355 left. And I believe they still have two timeouts. I think they've used one so far yeah, in the second half. Yeah, they had to use half. that timeout when they didn't have enough men on the field. And uh, we'll see if that uh, plays a role here late. Trask in motion. Pearson's going to fire downfield, and that Schooler pass looked at it. almost uh, picked off there by Schooler. He was in the vicinity, but the uh, pass incomplete, so it's going to be second down and 10. Masolanski can still run this football. There's plenty of time left. You've almost got, you got three minutes, 50 seconds. That's plenty of time to run this ball down the field at Lewis's pace. No need to try to go outside your game plan. Just you got to execute that game plan, and you'll be driving. In Thurston, uh, only thrown the ball 30 times coming in. They do try to run it, but I'm telling you, the Lawrence defense has really come to life here. There is no room to run for Tyler Lewis. He had all kinds of room through the first half and on into uh, the third quarter. But uh, Lawrence doing a great job stringing that play out, and it turns into a, a two-yard loss. And they've changed the way they've played that. They're getting more guys to the outside quicker and they're following that movement in the backfield faster. You said they didn't, Lomesolanski, they're doing what they've always done, but right now Lawrence is, is able to kind of block on that. Thurston's pass is blocked. Speaking of blocks. Knocked down, it's gonna be an incomplete pass. So the uh, Eagles are gonna have to punt here from their own 20 yard line. So Lawrence, as long as they uh, hold on to the football in great position here late in this ball game. Dean's Detailing has been Maine's auto detailing leader since 1971. Renew your vehicle's appearance, protect your auto investment, enjoy the ride, call them at 945-3016 or visit deansdetailing.com. Now as a coach, do you ever consider, I know the position that you're in right now, do you consider trying to go for it here on fourth, knowing what Lawrence has done on offense? Not with this much time. I just feel like you're giving Lawrence this ball back and they're just, you know, they're going to waste that time away the way that they're playing on offense right now. Great job there by Kyle Berger-Roy kicking it away from Isaiah Schooler and the Eagles get a good roll there. So Lawrence will start at their own 39-yard uh, line. So about a 43-yard punt there by Berger Roy, and let's see how the Bulldogs approach it here with their first lead of the night, 2.57 left. 
You've got to think they want to keep it on the ground here to chew up the time. Yeah, keep it on the ground and more importantly, keep it in your hands. Do not fumble this football. Make Meselonski earn it. Here's Schooler trying to get around that left end. He is successful. He's got the first down and he'll run it out of bounds inside Meselonski territory. Goes out at the 49 of the Eagles. And you got to feel good right now if you're a Bulldog fan. Yeah, Meselonski now starting to burn those timeouts. They're going to have to. First down like that, you're going to, I mean, you're just, there's going to come a point where you've got to stop the clock in between these plays because otherwise Lawrence will run that clock out. Temperature here tonight right around 50 degrees, but beautiful day, beautiful night for high school football here. Final game of the regular season here on October 20th. Couldn't ask for better weather. Schooler working the right side this time. And he's got more running room again. Shifting his way and maybe in for six more, but no, he'll be run out inside the 10 yard line. How about the night for Isaiah Schooler? Can't stop him, just can't do it. It's just, he's, he's got that extra burst. You know, he, he's right now, he's just on another level from the rest of the guys on this field. He's just so quick and able to explode past defenders at every chance he gets. And uh, yeah, it keeps the defense uh, guessing out there because uh, you can stop on a dime, go left, go right, switch gears. Really throwing the Mesolonsky defense off balance here. So first and goal once again for Lawrence. They're at about the eight yard line. It's gonna be who else? Isaiah Schooler, he's into the end zone. Six more for Schooler and the Bulldogs. And it's now 40 to 27. Ball game right there, right? I mean, you're gonna see it here. Schooler gets the ball and he knows what to do. I just, I mean, this time up the middle, you've seen a but lot going the from the edges. Though. Yeah. This offensive line, I mean, they've really blocked well in the second half. And Schooler, I mean, he sees that end zone and he knows he's going to get there. And that probably does it. You see some people already, there's a truck in the end zone. They're already trying to pull away. That probably is your football game right there, folks. And the extra point is good. Wow, what a turnaround in this game. Lawrence, 28 unanswered points here in the second half. Some happy uh, Bulldog fans and cheerleaders on the uh, near sideline. Senior night, so if uh, the Bulldogs, uh, barring a spectacular comeback here by Mesolonski, the Bulldogs are going to head into the postseason as one of the top two seeds, maybe the number one seed in Class B North. Either way, Aaron, they're going to get a bye, get a chance to uh, regroup, get an extra week healthier heading into uh, the semifinals. Meanwhile, Mesolonski, they're going to be forced to play a quarterfinal game. And it's likely to be against the uh, the Brewer Witches. Uh, Brewer playing Brunswick tonight, but the, the Dragon's not worth a lot of points. So Brewer likely to stay in the number five spot. Lawrence will jump up, and Mesolonski likely to be in the number four spot, so it would be Mesolonski and Brewer potentially. That's just uh, speculation on my part next week. Yeah, and Hill points math. Uh, it's, it's all <laughs> over my head, Jim, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. That, that seems it like happens. it's going to play out, yeah. Here is a, a bounding kick. It's going to get past the uh, second line there in the return team for Mesolonski, finally picked up by Balboni. Balboni up the middle of the field. He's into Lawrence territory. Coach Hersom not happy with the coverage there by his team. So uh, 2.26 on the clock and Balboni giving his team good field position, giving his team a chance. Yeah, he does. A squib kick here for a second. It looks like Lawrence is gonna have an opportunity to maybe make a play on this football because it bounced off a couple of Eagles, but Balboni gets it, he knows what to do with it. Make a couple of cuts, nice blocking there by the Eagles, and he's going down the field all the way to midfield, so some great field position, and this is still a football game if they can get some quick you know, plays here and put some points on the board. Pass across the middle intended for Gabe Bessie. It's in and out of his hands. 
problem now being for Meselonski is you're, you know, a run, run, run team. All of a sudden now you do have to pass the football. You can't afford to run it because too much time will come off the clock. So this is kind of uncharted territory for them now looking to try to throw this football. Declan Thurston at quarterback, the sophomore, he's got the game on his shoulders. And they're going to keep it on the ground. It's going to be Balboni. Balboni's got the first down. They're trying to get to, to the sideline. He'll go out of bounds, so that'll stop the clock. So a big pickup there for Mesolonski. So uh, let's uh, hold the presses here for the moment. Uh, Mesolonski not going down without a fight here. They certainly aren't. Still got a long ways to go, but... Good field position all of a sudden here inside the 30, almost to the red zone. Get a touchdown, get an onside kick. You got a chance. Here's Thurston spinning. Oh. Rolls it over the middle, it's gonna be picked off by Fortin. Fortin will be tackled finally at about the 44 yard line by the quarterback Thurston who slams the turf and that should do it. Pass over the middle and number 44 for Lawrence. Logan Fortin picks it off and that's the uh, third turnover of the night right for the Eagles, yeah, Aaron. Yes, that is the third turnover for them and that's a costly one. Any chance you had it maintaining, you know, a chance in this game probably out the window there. A nice heady play by the linebacker to get that ball and get some yardage afterwards as well. Again, we'll be back with you uh, next Friday night. We'll see where we end up. We'll see what the results are from tonight. And we'll pick uh, an excellent quarterfinal matchup for you. Check it out at bangordailynews.com backslash game of the week to find out where we're going. You can also go to driveshowmain.com. And here's Schooler. And not much here. And he'll pick up a yard with the forward progress. But we're down inside uh, two minutes in this one. And the Bulldogs uh, have a gimpy quarterback right now in Braden Ballard, but certainly the scoreboard uh, makes everybody on the uh, Lawrence side feel a lot better. Not only that, but you're, as you mentioned, probably going to get a bye coming out of this game, and you need it. I mean, you've got to get that right knee better. You've got to give Schooler a chance to kind of recuperate. There have been some other injuries for this team in the first half. You've got to get your team healthy. It does start, though, with that quarterback. And it's going to be Schooler. He'll be taken down for a loss. Got some finals uh, to report. Got a flag down as well. We'll get to that here in just a second. Ellsworth, uh, 48, Washington Academy, 12. That is a final. Ellsworth making the playoffs for the first time, Aaron. Good for them. That's, I mean, that's been a long time coming. I remember a few years back covering that football team where they just one win. That's all they asked for was one win. You see progress, though, steady progress, and that, that is awesome. Coney came in tonight 5-2, and two, the number two seed in Class B North, but they lose to Gardner tonight 13-7. To Coney coming off a 27-17 win over uh, Mesolonski. Gardner winning that ball game in overtime. That game uh, just down the road, very entertaining as well. Penalty here against Mesolonski. What was the call there, Aaron? It was tough to tell. I, I'm not really completely sure. It looked like they gave an extra twist of Schooler's arm when they brought him down to the field. So there may be some sort a of foul. yeah, a personal foul or unsportsmanlike conduct, something along those lines. That would be my guess. John Babs, the winner tonight, 45 to nine over Orno. That's a final. Foxcroft winning at Madanakook, 40 to nothing. That is a final. Another final. Oceanside 67. Bells Fast 26. Oxford Hills over Chevers 13 to 7. A final as well. Isaiah Schooler. One of his final carries of the night. He has carried his team along with uh, great work by the offensive line. Probably. That big kickoff return by Schooler really turned this game around. It was a 14-point lead in the third quarter for Mesolonski, 27-13. They had just scored, looked like they were uh, taking charge in this one, but as I said earlier, in these rivalry games, you just never know. And uh, the kickoff return by Schooler turned it around, and since then it's been all Bulldogs. And probably 
Just take a knee here. I'm not sure you really need to run any more plays. 40 seconds and counting. You've got yourself a first down. Just, yeah, just soak this one in. Senior game. They're pumped up on the sideline. The fans are pumped up on the sideline. Now's that chance to really relax yourself finally and let yourself realize you just won a big football game. All right, clock winding down. Uh, we'll get to the rest of the scoreboard in the post-game show. Hockey score to report uh, with a, about 10 minutes to go. UMaine trailing a Miami of Ohio 7 to 5. And we are down to uh, five seconds and jubilation on the near sideline. Lawrence had come from behind victory. They defeat Mesolonski here tonight at Kai's Field, the final 41 to 27. So the Bulldogs of Coach John Herson, they finish up at five and three. And Mesolonski finishes up the regular season at four and four. Bulldogs will get a bye. We'll see if they are the number one or number two seed. When all the results come in, Mesolonski will have to play a quarterfinal game next weekend. All right, so we will step aside for a couple of moments. We'll come back with the post-game show. This is the BDN Maine Game of the Week. It's your picnic table <laughs> and your park bench. It's your hotel room, your office, and your nursery. It's your first date and a shoulder to cry on. It's your barber shop, your dance floor, and your toolbox. It's your car. Find it at Quirk. You deserve a clean car. Let Dean's take care of the details. Dean's Detailing has been Maine's auto detailing leader since 1971. Let the pros at Dean's renew your vehicle's appearance and protect your auto investment. For interior detailing, exterior detailing, and complete detailing packages, call Dean's at 945-3016 or book your appointment online at deansdetailing.com. And Dean's gift cards are the perfect fit for any special occasion. Dean's Detailing. We make used look like new. Since 2006, we've offered free ATMs worldwide to our customers, saving them over $16 million. Bangor Savings Bank. You matter more. What do you get when you combine pure diesel power with 1,600 pounds of raw iron and steel? Meet the 2R Series from John Deere. Up to 32 horsepower, four-wheel drive, cruise control, and a six-year powertrain warranty that's best in its class. This rugged workhorse won't make your breakfast, but with quick-attach features, you can do pretty much anything else. Ride one today at your John Deere dealer. Visit Greenway Equipment in Bangor and Ellsworth, or find us online at greenwayequipment.com. Welcome back to Kai's Field and the post-game show. What a game we had here tonight. Uh, Mesolonski had a 27-13 lead midway through the third quarter, but a big kickoff return by Isaiah Schooler. We're going to get to the uh, highlights uh, here in just a second, but uh, the Bulldogs outscoring Mesolonski 28-0 uh, down the stretch. Here's our first highlight, and uh, Austin Pelletier, the talented running back, a touchdown run there to give Mesolonski a 6-0 lead, extra point good to make it 7 to nothing. Later on, it would be Tyler Lewis. Here's his longest touchdown run of the night. It goes for 44 yards, showing off his speed, showing off his evasiveness, and showing off his strength right there, breaking a tackle and on into the end zone. After the extra point, it was 14-6, Mesolonski. Eagles back to work. And there's that to double handoff and ends up in the hands of Lewis. They started at the 40. Lewis ends up in the end zone. Second touchdown of the night, uh, Aaron, and uh, quite a first half there for uh, Tyler Lewis. And you got to think at this point, you know, fans are starting to wonder what's going to happen here. Is Mesolonski going to pull away with this thing? Or are they going to run away with it? And, well, they didn't. Braden Ballard, the quarterback for Lawrence, trying to get his team back into it. The uh, quarterback had sneak here and he gets into the end zone and after uh, the extra point there made it 21 to 13 but then it was uh, Balboni powering his way into the end zone for Mesolonski and after the extra point there that's what we're talking about the 14 point lead midway through the third quarter for the Eagles but uh, then the long kickoff return for Schooler and then it was all Bulldogs after that Here's Ballard looking across the middle and left wide open was Logan Fortin. 
and easily into the end zone there. And uh, extra point good, made it to 27 all. And then late in the ball game, Bulldogs looking for some insurance. And who else? Number two, Isaiah Schooler, schooling the defense once again. And we saw that a lot here tonight. Uh, again, uh, getting past that front line of defense, Aaron. And then once he got into the middle of that uh, Mesolonsky defense, just uh, zigging and zagging his way for plenty of yardage here tonight. I want to thank our crew here tonight, along with Aaron Jackson. Thank you, sir, for your uh, self-proclaimed uh, stellar work here tonight. <laughs> um, Anytime. Also, our whole crew, uh, Kim Mitchell from Digital Workshop. Fine job actually running the whole show. He's the one that he's the hero. The yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, Mark Paulato on replays and uh, feeding us those scores uh, for tonight's ball game. And uh, up in the uh, second deck, Ron Lisnet was on his game here tonight. His first uh, appearance here in the 2017 season. He's but, a veteran now. And uh, he's a veteran. Chris Parent, not a veteran, but uh, stepping in tonight, uh, did a nice job here on camera number two. Chris Parent. Uh, joining us tonight. So thanks to all the crew and thanks to you for watching uh, this game here tonight. The final once again come from behind victory for the Dogs. The Bulldogs win here tonight over Mesolonsky 41 to 27 and that'll do it for the BDN main game of the week. I'm Jim Churchill saying so long from Kai's Field here in Fairfield. The BDN main game of the week is presented by Quirk Auto Group. It's your car. Find it at Quirk. The BDN main game of the week is also brought to you by Tradewinds Market, Greenway Equipment Sales, Dean's Detailing, and by Bangor Savings Bank, Northeast Driving School, and Digital Workshop. The BDN main game of the week is a production of Sportsnet Maine.